call the meeting to order then, please. Um, the first item on the agenda was to uh, review the meeting minutes from the last meeting, but those are not ready yet, so we'll do that at our next meeting. Um, and then next up on was uh, liquor license violation hearings. And I understand there are some official things I have to say at the beginning for Brian. Why don't I turn over to Brian since he has the stuff we're supposed to say in a writing Sure. I'll read, the notice. I'll read the notice of hearing okay. for the 6 o'clock. Um, notice of hearing dated July 1st, 2019. On July 10th, 2019 at 6 p.m. in room A of the town offices for Sandy Lane Whaley Mass, this letter will hold a show cause hearing concerning violation of Chapter 138 of the General Laws at your premises license for all package goods store sales to wit sale of alcoholic beverages to a person under the age of 21 on May 30th, 2019, a violation of Section 34 of Chapter 138. You are requested to attend the show cause hearing. You may speak on your own behalf and offer evidence. An attorney may represent you if you so choose. At the time of the hearing, the select board may consider disciplinary action on account of any violation found to have occurred, including suspension and or other limitation on the exercise of your license. And that was addressed to Muffins General Market LLC, 443 Main Street, Hampton Mass, so 1038. Um, that was the notice that was sent out. And I'll read the, um, there's a letter from uh, Chief Savine to the select board dated June 3rd, 2019, regarding alcohol compliance checks. And he wrote, on May 30th, 2019, Whitley Police conducted alcohol compliance checks with the assistance of two Frontier Regional High School students and Deerfield Police School Resource Officer Brian Ravish. These checks were conducted at the Whitley Circle K and Muffins General Market. Both underage individuals were given cash from a police officer and attempted to purchase alcohol. The Circle K was in compliance with requesting identification and refused to sell to the underage individual. Muffins General Market was not in compliance and sold alcohol to an underage individual without requesting identification. Both locations were made aware of the results of the compliance check. The owner of Muffins General Market was given the attached letter informing them of their non-compliance violation. With this being their first violation, I feel it was appropriate to issue a warning instead of pursuing further investigation and to educate them about our crime prevention initiatives. We also wanted to give them an opportunity to evaluate the practices of their staff, take appropriate corrective actions, and provide them with assistance to help maintain compliance. If you have any questions, please let me know. Submitted James A. Savini, Jr. Is that an accurate uh, reading of your letter? Yes, it is. So that is the yeah. um, facts that, that are before the board currently. So I think what um, we mostly want from this hearing is we, we just want a chance to have a conversation. Uh, I think that's first and foremost. Um, and give us a chance to ask any questions of you about, um, and maybe I'll start and um, you all can chime in as well. I mean, the main thing I'm uh, interested in finding out is uh, what have you done or what you know ser series of things have happened since this incident that you've done in response to that incident. And that would be, I'd be very interested in finding out kind of how, how you're reacting to it. Well, there was immediate uh, verbal. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, can you say who you are? Uh, Diane Corsa and Bill Corsa. Okay. We're co owners. Um, immediately following that evening, there was training for each of our employees to go over the policy and the rules uh, and what's expected of them. At that point, we had said 30 years old. When we reviewed that tape, the, the employee just was not paying attention. Um, she was made aware of how she just uh, did not follow her, our expectations. Um, we now have a formal updated written policy that everybody's had to review, sign off on, and was given an opportunity for any clarification. So, okay. and they know it will include, at this point, termination. Okay. Um, for training, I understand that bartenders in the state of Massachusetts have to have something called serve safe. Certification. Is there any equivalent for 
Okay, so your your training is basically your own training and understanding the policy and so on. Right. And I, I just and I say, have a, I yeah. have a version of our oh. policy if you would all like to see it. Oh, okay. Uh, I think that would be uh, okay. of interest. Yeah. I have to say, I did, it wasn't recently, but I think I, I did get approved once. And I told them that I'm so um, what's right, flattered that you approved me because I don't look 30. <laughs> Um, uh, that that's the main thing I wanted to ask about Fred John do you have anything you'd like to ask about so is that employee that violated the, the agreement is that employee still working for the establishment yes, yes. okay and if you done any kind of checks or anybody just test the waters to see if they're following that anybody come in under age and try to buy is that we can review um we have security we can go on live and watch what our staff is doing at the register um we've actually talked about having somebody our own little sting yeah. come in um her eyes were pretty enlightened that night when i got there i was on produce run came in and she told me what happened and said well you know, we let it kind of go, but it's, uh, it's like, well, we'll see what happens, but you might have just lost your job. And with our help, it's, we have to treat them more like kids. Everybody makes mistakes. They need to realize the severity of it. Realize that they are liable. You're just like having a parent that it's, and just, you, we got to work with them. I mean, if we fired everybody that made a mistake, we, <laughs> we'd be open about so, so you, four hours a day. You have constant video camera okay. on the place? We can show you now. Okay. Oh. How many different employees work there that would sell alcohol? Right now, 10? No, no, they all don't. Uh, we have two no, folks that all... don't do that, so eight people. Eight people would be, okay. Yeah. And the other two just, they're not at the counter? They don't work the register, correct? They're out back. Um, I'm actually glad to hear that you understand that people make mistakes. Uh, I, I'm more interested in the systems that you've shown us than individual actions uh, because it's the systems that need we need to make sure are, are spot on. Uh, because people do make mistakes, they can't make more than one in this case, but they, they do make mistakes. So I'm personally glad that the person was not terminated, although that's your, totally your call, obviously. Um, of the eight people, did, is there some type of a, I'm, I'm guessing none of these people, these are all entry level jobs, and none of these people have, have probably worked the counter before selling alcohol. Is that pretty accurate? Not necessarily. No. What kind of volume do you guys do with your liquor sales on a, on a given night? Well, from 3.30 on, it's... I mean, is it like a couple six packs at a night, or is it... Oh, no, it's more than that, but I mean, the problem... Like, we've looked at doing, like, what... You know, you go to Costco, you go to BJ's, you go to, say, Big Y. You're standing behind an elderly person who is obviously... But they have a 100% rule. Yeah. We've thought about that. The problem is we have one register. That person needs to pay attention. You've seen this guy, you card him. I don't think you need to card him tomorrow. It's the same guy you know. If someone comes in you don't know, card him. Because it could be your job. And it's, you can only, like I said, we're like parents. You can only tell them and hopefully they make you proud. Yeah. <laughs> And that's, that's where we're at. I mean, for us to put in 100% card everybody every time, it's... Yeah, we it's have a lot of great issues. Is the volume that great where you're going to be having five or six people deep at the register when you're taking 30 seconds to card? Keep going. Yeah. Really? Okay. At that, at that point in time, you get to where you're doing a sale every 30 seconds. And it's just, I mean, if you came in and carded you once, and they know who you are, yeah. and we have a lot of regulars, they know what they drink. 
whether they, they're coming up with their beer or if they may want a nip, they know. Oh, you want? They know them to talk to them. Okay. I mean, it's the one person they let by they don't pay attention to, which happened in this case, or even somebody that they might have been paying attention, they looked at them like, you know who that is? No, mind your car. Well, you look, there's, there's no line. And the line should matter. When you do not know anybody, when, you, when I can say, that guy looked young, oh, I, I've carved him, he, I know him. I respect that. As long as you've done it, but they realize that they do need to card. Right. That's my only concern. And again, I, it, it's, 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 it's you guys' decision making, but because they're oftentimes younger people at the register, you're putting an ounce of faith in their credibility. Oh, yeah, I know. And the temptation for, and I'm just going to pick an age, and I'm just going to pick a hypothetical. The temptation for a, a 20 year old behind the counter who sees a friend come in and say, Yeah, I know. Because it's hard to be 20. Th that's my only cautionary tale, having been a bartender, having, you know, a long time ago now. That's the cautionary tale that I have. Yeah, I know him. Okay, well, you may know him, but are you sure they're 20? I mean, it's hard to card somebody you know. So if you have a policy, if we card everybody all the time, it gives them cover, political cover, if you will, that they're not having some friend of theirs give them a hard time because they carded them and then they, rather than, I, I'm just, Right. No, you know, I, I understand what you're saying. It's hard to be 20. I understand what you're saying, and I think the uh, a little bit more of the fear of God's been put in. I don't think our employees would do that. Um, we give them the keys to the booze is a small thing, the way I look at it. We give them the keys to the whole store. Yeah. And for them to do something like that, that would that would hurt even more than a simple mistake, obviously. Okay. But. Yeah, I mean, just, we just, we gotta we we're always you gotta work with what you got and we gotta try and do better all the time. I mean it's that old work complacement that we don't like. Right. You say your policy that they must be at least eighteen years or older to sell. That's state law. That is that state law? Yeah. How often do you turn people away? That happen? Oh, I've had we've had incidents where people have been carted, and I've been outside, and a guy comes out furious because he's forty years old. Yeah. And, it's, and he just doesn't happen to have the. That's like, I don't get, don't yell at her, because yeah. okay. you're gonna keep walk, go get your license, whether you have it or not, go get your license. If not, I'm, I I do apologize. That person made the call. It's not like, yeah, okay, yeah, you look old enough. Yeah. It's just like a bartender. Bartender makes a call, owner stays out of it. Because it's initially their responsibility. Right. Okay. That's all I got. I just, yeah. I like the conversation. Okay. You know what's good? No. No, I think that. I don't have any more questions. And I would say, Jim, I think you made the right call in the process he took personally. Yeah, we've, we've never had any issues in yeah. the past. It's yeah. This was a one, one time yeah, thing. Yeah. And I don't, I mean, I know we have the option of like disciplinary action. I don't see a, a strong reason to to do anything other than the warning they've had. They seem to have reacted responsibly to it then came and even brought their policy. So I don't see any point in us doing any other kind of action. Okay. So then do I need to officially close the hearing? Well, we should close the hearing and then you should take a vote on how you want to resolve it. Oh, okay. Okay, is there anyone else who has a comment for this hearing? Okay, then I'll close the hearing. And then I guess we can maybe jump the gun when I said earlier. I would make a motion that to take no, what's that? Yeah, to take no action. To take no action. Um, 
be yeah. what's already taking place. I would second that. All in favor? Okay. Aye. Yep. Okay. Thank, Thank you so much for agenda is Castaway Lounge, a uh, similar kind of uh, violation, violation of uh, alcohol laws, uh, but a different section. So I'll turn over to Brian for the reading of it. Notice the date of July 1st, 2019. On July 10th, 2019, at 6.15 p.m. in room A of the town offices for Sandy Lane, Lincoln, Mass. This one will hold a show cost hearing concerning an operation of your premises license for general on-premise all alcohol sales, including reports of the matters noted below, which may involve violation of the terms of the license and or the Massachusetts Alcoholic Beverages Statute, Chapter 138 of the General Laws and or the regulations of the Massachusetts Alcoholic Beverages Control Commission. In particular, the matters included disturbances and or property damage between and among patrons and others on March 2nd, 2019 and June 2nd, 2019 possible service of alcohol to an intoxicated person on January 26, 2019 in violation of Section 69 of Chapter 138. Property damage to the dwelling of an abutter to the premises by a patron on February 23, 2019 and the patron requiring emergency medical care on March 12, 13, 2019. You are requested to attend the show cost hearing. You may speak on your own behalf and offer evidence. An attorney may represent you if you so choose. At the time of the hearing, the select board may consider disciplinary action on account of any violation found to have occurred, including suspension and or other limitation on the exercise of your license. The notice was addressed to Demetrius Constantopoulos, DBA Castaway Lounge, PO Box 218, Whitley, Mass, 01093. That was the notice of the hearing. Do we have an attorney of tools here? And it may. May want to hear from him first before we okay. go. Members of the board, uh, it's been a while since we've seen each other. Mm -hmm. I think I've seen you on the computer uh, almost <laughs> all the time. Yeah. Uh, again, for the record, my name is Attorney Brian O'Toole with the offices of uh, Brian and Boudreau, uh, based out of South Hadley. Uh, members of the board, uh, um, I first became aware of this matter, uh, I believe it was Monday morning. Mm -hmm. um, the Constantopolis is the uh, I believe became aware on the weekend. Um, I was out of. Um, but they became aware this past weekend. Yes, of the of the notice of this hearing. Oh, the notice of the hearing, not of these incidents. Of this. Okay. Of this okay. hearing. Okay. Sorry. Um, and right when I became aware of it, I did contact the town administrator, Mr. Domina, uh, asking for any additional information that he may have, other than uh, the. The notice um, he did within the day uh, give me some police reports um, but also at that same time um, on a bit of a related matter I get a proposed closing schedule um, for the transfer of the property and the business with a projected closing date of Friday which pulled me into many different um, directions here. Um, I have been able to review the uh, police reports. I have not been able uh, to uh, interview or talk to any of the employees that may have been present during the alleged incidents. From what I see, I have many questions. Um, um, and so the purpose of me being here was to ask for a continuance based upon um, many of these incidents go back to the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. I have to find, one, do these employees still work there? Two, if they do, do they recall the incidents? And do they recall the incidents as um, either described in, I think, in either, in either one or two instances, a formal police report or a call log that does not have any identifying information. Um, and I would note that uh, the notice of hearing indicates that um, Mr. Constantopoulos can present evidence. It has to be a meaningful opportunity. Um, and based upon where we were given the holiday and the age of a, most of these incidents, um, 
most of which in the police reports do not indicate alcohol at all, I have questions um, in terms of what exactly we're talking about. I, I see that at least on the agenda, it references 138.69, which uh, indicates uh, serving alcohol to an, a intoxicated person. Um, in the police reports, there's nothing about the service of alcohol to a patron. Uh, there's uh, presumptions um, that individuals were patrons. There are presumptions that alcohol was served to those people. Um, but in all the circumstances, the police were called, and I believe in all of them, it was done by the establishment. Um, um, so given the, um, the scenario that I've just set forth here, that one, um, uh, the short notice does not give the Constantopoulos a meaningful opportunity to, uh, I, I understand the chief is here, um, but I doubt any of the officers that responded are here to be able to question them about that. Um, and also given, um, while I do believe Friday is an ambitious goal uh, to complete this transaction, um, there are one or two things to button up. Uh, regarding state certificates from DOR um, and from the Department of Unemployment Assistance, which is a new wrinkle uh, that the state has now, not to do with the ADCC, but with the transfer of the liquor license to have that occur. Um, those usually take a couple of days. They've been requested from the accountants. By the time that this board meets again, I would be shocked if the transfer hasn't occurred and the, um, um, the many set of regulations on the new owners. Um, well, I, I can't speak for them, uh, but I understand that they're gonna be closed for a period of time while they do the renovations necessary to comply with this board's uh, uh, requirements for the transfers, transfer of the liquor license. Um, so that would be my initial request, um, would be to, um, ask for a delay to the next um, select board hearing uh, to have a meaningful visit. I think it would be two weeks from today. Um, three weeks. Three weeks. And, yeah, I was, I was just about to double check the calendar. I think okay. it might actually be three weeks. July 31st. Uh, okay. What's that date? Yeah, July 31st. Because it's the uh, second and last Tuesday, uh, not second and fourth. Um, so yeah. Okay. So, okay. Within, so within, that, within that period of time, one of two things is going to happen. Either I'm going to have found all the people that I can to gather as much information as I can for incidents that occurred in January, February, um, um, or or this or the transaction would have been complete. The Constantopolises will no longer be the proprietors of the Castaway Lounge, and the new owners will have started their um, okay. renovations. Okay, I think we've heard you. Um, do you have any questions of? And so, what have you done since you were aware of this? Uh, what Monday you said? Since Monday. What, what have you done since Monday? Well, since Monday, um, again, it's it's been, again, it's only me dealing with these two issues at the office. So, um, I contacted Mr. Domina directly to figure out what the allegations were. Um, contacted the Constantopolises, who are also in the process of trying to gather the, the requisite documents to complete the transaction here to see, again, because of the holiday and the way that the schedule works at the Castaway, figure out when these people work and when I can meet with them. Um, again, I have... You think you've done that already? Oh, I, with the constant conferences. Now, I've not been able to speak with, uh, okay. I believe, one of the managers who, who it or. Uh, one of the managers who was cited in the uh, uh, one of the police reports, um, who was interviewed a couple of days later, asked to identify an individual. I don't believe she any longer works there, so I have to figure out, okay, who works, yeah. who, okay. who is working there. I was just wanted, we don't need to repeat everything you said. Sorry. I just asked, what have you done since Monday? Oh, that was his question. Okay, contacted Mr. Domino contacted the Constantopolises in terms of trying to find people that would be able to tell us. Because again, there, were, there, there was nothing in 
Wait, much wait. like the last um, the last hearing that we just had where when the event occurs you get the notice right there mm -hmm. some of these are just call logs yeah. they're, they're not necessarily police reports and I don't know that necessarily the, uh, the police station or right. the department would other than make a log of that they made a call there and these are other things that I, I, I'm not aware of that there's anything else done okay John um, I get that the ownership is going to change imminently, um, and so technically some of this may be moved. However, I guess my concern is, concern is the trend that clearly exists since, let's say January 1st that there are more incidences since January 1st than we were either then made aware day. of or discussed in the private in the previous X number of years. That everything was a well run operation, a clean ship, et cetera, et cetera. And and, and now the the the, the foot traffic in and out of the castaways over the past six months is a lot more visually than there has been in previous years. And I drive past there at least a couple times a day because of where I live. So my concern is more the trend line and the systems that are in place now, because I don't believe there are a lot of great systems in place right now for, for, for monitoring who's in and out of the place. I, I can't believe there are based upon, upon this. I mean, it, it's a fair number of instances, police log or not, in a, in a six month period of time. It, it, it is just a lot. If this existed last summer, I think people would have had a much harder time transferring licenses. So I, I'm, I'm troubled that we, we have to, but I, I will, you know, I'm in favor of granting this continuance, but I'm troubled that it's all happening right before I'm closing, and it makes me scratch my head. It really does. And the management's gonna be the same at some level, and, and I just think we need to bring in the new ownership if the manager's gonna be the same, and, and talk to them about the, the processes not an informal hearing, perhaps, because it's, again, it's, they're not responsible, I get that. But the manager, if it's consistent manager, there is there is a consistency there. And again, I can't speak for the I know you can't. I can't speak for the new owners, but I would be surprised if what you're surmising that current management would remain. Again, I can't speak I, for I them. That will be their own call, but I, I think they're, they have their own ideas. And, I have one more question before I throw it open to the, the public here. Um, do you know the name of the uh, current manager? I do not off the top of my head, no. Is it um, Mr. Constantopoulos? Um, he is or the proprietor. He's the proprietor, but, do you, but is he the manager? Not that I, I cannot answer that question. Okay, so you don't even I'm know. Not, I'm not prepared to answer that okay. question. So I was you prepared. don't know who the manager is there? I do not. Does anybody in the audience know who the manager is around? I'm hoping somebody has their hand up like this or something. Okay, because that, that is sometimes an issue as well. So we don't even know who the manager is. And go ahead, Fred. I have a question, I guess, more directed towards our chief. In any of these incidents that occurred, okay, I understand your office documents what happened a patrol officer uh, has they has any of these been gone back to to castaways ownership have they been notified as these occur or within a certain period what is that has that happened not that I'm aware of I haven't had any meetings with them to discuss so you haven't anything. even informed them that say the next day or two or within so many hours 
what happened either in the building or parking lot or no is that your standard policy for anything that happens in town if somebody breaks in there or has some malicious activity do you that the owner was not there do you notify them after did something happen if somebody were to break into that establishment yes of course we would notify yeah, the right, owner. But, if it's, but if there's a neighbor down the street that's affected and we we don't know for sure that it was connected to castaways we're not going to when every time we get a, an alarm okay. call, or every time we get an unwanted person and go in and talk to the owner and say, you had two unwanted people this past weekend, are you aware of that? And see how they're handling the situation. We haven't been doing that, no. Can I ask why not? Um, that's just one establishment in town. I mean, there's, there's okay, things that happen in other... Town. I know, but there's other things that happen in other establishments. I'd be spending most of my time visiting businesses and trying to track down owners and tell them stuff that happened in the parking lot at the gas station or something that happened at, you know, at whatever location at whatever business, there's, there's a much more things that, that happen um, around town. And that's why a lot of these incidents are, are log entries because it's, it's just a, it's a normal kind of occurrence type of thing. Um, they're not major incidents. If it was the specific incident, I think that, that uh, Fred's referring to, I mean, we weren't, we weren't able to, verify that it really had anything to do with Castaway other than that you know a manager or bartender identified that person as being at the location other than that it, it didn't have a connection to it wasn't an employee of the castaways or somebody that broke in because somebody at the castaway sent them there to do that it was they were two separate incidents from our perspective so I wouldn't I wouldn't be meeting with every business owner every time something happened in town so if something happened in the parking lot, the owners are inside the building doing their thing, something happened in the parking lot, you wouldn't tell the owners that hey, there was this activity going on? If, if they were there, we would be speaking with them, yes. I mean, not in, if they were in the building doing their routine monitoring and serving and whatever, you're saying you wouldn't go in and tell them, hey, you had this incident. We, we would go in and speak with the, we would go in and speak with the manager. If the owners were there, we would speak with them, and okay. we'd speak with whoever's got so the authority. So someone in responsibility. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, at at the time, I mean, we 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 followed up twice with this incident. We went in there and yeah. talked to them. We didn't specifically go to the owner's house and give him written notice like we did with the compliance check. It to me, it wasn't it wasn't a specific compliance check type of situation. It was just incidents that happened. So we wouldn't send a letter every time something happened and notify them that there was this incident that happened. That's, we did that with a specific compliance check because that was a specific operation. Okay. The, Jim, the, and forgive me if you guys were talking about the same incident, I don't think you're right. The, the time when somebody was unresponsive on the 12th of March, that was at Club Castaway, correct? That was inside the building? Yes. And was there any conversation about why she was unconscious and yes. barely breathing? There it, was. There was between her and you know who she was there with and medical staff, the EMTs and who showed up. Yes. But there was no no one was trying to find out whether she had and maybe they were, I'm just I'm just asking. Yeah whether she was also served alcohol at the same time. Because I don't see that here. And, it, and I can't not, imagine Yeah, she's it's not in there. It, that, would be, that would be all through the EMS, um, whatever report that they would have, whatever information they got from them rel related to the, the medical incident. That would have to come from them. But if, and I don't know whether it was an employee or a, or a patron. Mm -hmm. But if it were a patron, or e either one, I guess. There was no investigation as to whether something illegal had taken place. I mean, is someone doing is, is someone um, doing opioids in the in, in, in Club Castaway? I'm, I'm just guessing. Did somebody drink too much? I mean, there's got to have been an investigation into, into why this poor person is is unresponsive and, and then eventually not breathing, but then all of a sudden. Miraculously, she's she's incredibly responsive, which tells me I know what happened to make her respond, you know, responsive. Mm -hmm. But 
where's the where's the discussion about how this happened in the first place? There there is a discussion. We weren't part of it. It wasn't our investigation. But but it's your invest but it's your responsibility. And again, I'm trying to just figure it out. Yep. It's your responsibility to figure out whether something illegal took place at, at the club castaways because if someone is un unresponsive, there is at least some indication yep. that something not so nice was happening. And we didn't have any indication that anything happened at the establishment. But they were still in the establishment. From yeah, yeah but it, what happened, whatever was consumed was consumed prior that was witnesses gave us some statement. That. I do. How do you know? Because I was given that information from EMS who, who told us what happened and what transpired and the, the time frame that it happened. But do you know if the person was served while? They, they were not. At least that's what someone told you. Yes. Yeah. So, so you'd have to, you'd have to. Yeah. Right, and I get you can only go in. on people's, on people's work. Mm -hmm. I, I guess, I'm a lay person, so I admit that. But I guess that kind of information is kind of helpful. Yeah. Because it leaves me wondering, okay, is the, are the systems, again, it's the systems. Are the systems in place at Club Castaway appropriate systems or are they not appropriate for the type of business that they're working on? And if they are not appropriate, how do we as a team either rectify the systems or take other actions if no one wants to rectify them? But clearly if someone is unresponsive in, a, in an establishment, I, I think it's worth asking a few questions by this by this board because I know I don't want an establishment where people are unresponsive and people say, oh, oh she's fine now, because yeah. it, it is going to happen again. And we've, we've had situations like that at other establishments in town where maybe somebody chokes or somebody had a heart attack or whatever the situation may be. We asked the questions to get a medical history. We talked to okay, people about- Okay, but that's about, different. They clearly took an illegal substance. I don't know that. Well, because you sure. said that she, she ingested something, not Club Castaway, but somewhere else. Mm -hmm. so, but you're yes. saying it's illegal. It may have been perfectly legal. Could have prescription. Yep. Okay. Yeah. But you get my point. I just, I'm just struggling here. I, but people do, people do stuff like that all the time. They can, you know, they go bar hopping or whatever you want to call it. They go to one place, they have a few drinks. Maybe they take something when they're at a party with their friends and then they go to an establishment and, and things that happen. It doesn't always mean that it's because of that establishment that it happened or they got it while they were at that establishment. Of course, we're going to ask those questions if, if we're there, we're investigating it, we're, we're looking into it. I mean, if we're not just walking in going, hey, this is a medical call. But then I hands. guess I would want to know if someone walks into an establishment, and again, it can be any establishment, although yeah. I can think of a couple in town that I'm pretty sure it doesn't happen to this degree. <clears throat> You'd be surprised, though. Okay, I've never read about it, so. Yeah, I don't yeah. see any other place right. listed um, as often. So, yeah. Well, because you guys have asked specifically for, it, for this location. If, and, I, and now I lost my train of thought a lot, but yeah. we are, I, I want to know what systems are in place by any management team, mm -hmm. new, old, or combined. What, because I know, again, when I was a bartender, I know what our policy was, if someone came in who we didn't think should be there, we had a specific system that we implemented right away. Mm -hmm. And it was Which not to be. have them hang around until they passed out on the floor. I agree. So I guess I going forward, mm -hmm. I want to know what the plans are. We've established those plans. Yeah, totally. yeah. Okay. I yeah, guess for, I, the, for the new owners, meeting with them once a week, discussing any incidents that happened, detail officers being in there, there's a whole slew of things that are, that are gonna take place that haven't been taking place. At this location, so I just, I just, it's not a common occurrence. Yeah. If it's so, being, yeah. so. the, the question we have to address is, do we want to continue? This? Yeah, that's fine. Um, and uh, I guess I don't know if there's anybody here in the the public who are here who have anything to add in on this particular item. Okay, so same procedure. Close the hearing. No, you would want. A motion to continue the hearing. Well, and then motion to continue. Oh, July 31st. Okay. I guess some of this going to depend on, I think, like, yeah. the attorney was well, saying. And then we deal with that later. Well, I mean, we don't know that the, the closing might not happen by July 31st. No, but so we whatever. Could, we, we don't know now all the information we need. No. So if we continue it, then maybe back explaining what happened on all those dates. 
or they may not be back because the place is closed. Well, I think maybe that's the one thing we've got to decide. Do we want to pursue this further and get explanation? I think what if happens, there, regardless yes, of I, whether there's a, a closing or not. I mean, that, that seems to overshadow what we're talking about. I, I hear you saying that there's a closing, new owners are going to be there, and these things supposedly won't happen. Does that mean we, we just forget what happened up till now? I, I think what, what General Tool is asking is that he hasn't, he, he feels like he hasn't had sufficient time to adequately prepare I, I all part of the yeah. facts. So I, we, I hear that, but, but he's also... We need to give them the opportunity to do that before rendering the final decision. Okay. Yeah. And so in my mind, they haven't had sufficient time to yeah. do yeah. that. Which, as frustrated as that is, yeah. for me, it's just the reality of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I would make a motion then. Oh, I'm sorry. Just Chris. one question. How much notice were they given uh, for this hearing? I think the mailing you said went on July 1st. Yeah. July 1st. July 1st. July 1st. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we first heard about it in June. <laughs> That was a, it was discussed at a June meeting. So it was discussed at our, at our last meeting, yeah. Yeah. So, we had so I I guess I would uh, move that we continue the hearing to our next meeting. We have to give a date certain and a time certain. So uh, we should say July thirty first and um, for the time, let's just say six PM for the top meeting. For Sandy Lane. And for Sandy Lane. Right here. This gorgeous room. Second. Um, Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, should we ask for Demetrius or his people to be here as well as the new owners? I mean, what's he going for? There he is for. My understanding is that he may opt to have an attorney come or he may do it in person. Okay. He, that's his uh, choice, not ours. Okay. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Gosh, we are trucking. You are getting really good at picking times. Okay. Um, so we've got about uh, two minutes before the next item. But uh, actually, the next item typically is comments from the public on items not listed on the agenda. So you'll see the agenda in there. If you have something on the agenda, we'll certainly give the public time to uh, weigh in on it when we get to it. But if you have comments on items that are not listed on the agenda, I'd be happy to entertain those now. Around, I see lots of really happy, sunny, swell tan faces. So, all right. Um, and is it uh, the folks from NAP here? Yes, I'm, I'm here on the. Oh, you're here on the. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, you're here for the host community agreements, uh, which my understanding is we have not uh, heard back from council on it. I spoke with him. This afternoon around 4.30, um, he, he had a court case that went two days, so he apologizes. He was going to try to get us something back um, before the meeting, but obviously yeah. we don't have that. Um, I don't think that should preclude us from having a conversation and if we come to some type of agreement on, on what we think the terms of the agreement should be, I think we could um, sort of move it forward. Yeah, but we probably will not want to actually sign an agreement until. Well, we don't have we don't have a final copy to mm -hmm. sign. Uh, but if if the board's comfortable at the end of our discussions taking a vote on the terms, subject to sort of non-substantive revisions by town council, mm -hmm. um, he he didn't ex in my conversation with him he didn't express he he didn't think that he was going to have many substantive comments. There were more. Okay. How items are reported and such. So. <coughs> the one comment I have, I think you may have said it similar to mine, the change is waiver of re review. Could you explain that? Why that's out, what that means? How would, how would, that, how well, would we do that if that language wasn't in here? So let me give a, a quick background of, of what's happened since the meeting. Um, okay. At the last meeting, uh, there was a, a request from Jonathan that, that um, 
uh, NAP advisors consider sending a portion or, or, or I think portions of, of their business plan to, um, for the select board to see if um, in a subsequent email they had uh, declined to do that. Uh, they didn't feel that that's something that they wanted to do. Uh, Joyce, and they asked to set up a conversation with Joyce and myself um, mm -hmm. to, to, to further talk about uh, in terms of the host community agreement, and in particular the community impact fee. Um, so Joyce and I had a, had a call with them, and what was what was discussed it, it is reflected in that revised agreement that the board was sent. Um, and that so that led to the change in number five from impact fee. Um, the community impact, fee, and I'll just read it quickly. The community impact fee shall be three percent of. NAP's gross sales of marijuana from the premises said fee shall be payable annually for each of the five years following receipt of a certificate of occupancy from the local building inspector. The first payment shall be due 45 days following each of said anniversaries of the, C of the issuance of the CO. Um, so there's a table in the document that says community impact fee, 3% gross sales, and the continued um, offer to do the charitable contribution and educational funding. And they sent us a revised uh, document that is what you have now with the changes to five that I just read and with uh, number six crossed out. Um, I don't think there were any other changes to the document that you haven't seen. So that's sort of where we are today. How does crossing out number six affect us? What's the impact? They have to review. Um, I think people have differing opinions as to as to um, the effect of number six. Um, Did you read that? I don't know. Yeah, I'll read it out loud. This is what he used to say. He used to say waiver of review. In lieu of the town's acceptance of fixed sum as provided below, NAP waives the town's obligation to annually review the determination of negative community impact and adjust the community impact fee accordingly. Um, As I read this, we are then obligated to annually review the determination of negative community impact. So we need to demonstrate how the existence of this growing facility is negatively impacting our community and put a dollar amount to that. I don't necessarily agree with how that's worded. Wait, you don't agree with my comment or you don't agree with? <laughs> I don't agree with what number, how number six is worded. Okay. Um, so I would be looking, we would want um, more input from town council on that. Um, well, it, it sounds like they, they want us to, well, to look at the, the community impact and if it's different than the, their fee, they're saying that we can't adjust the fee. And I, I think what we're saying, if, if there is more impact in the fee, we want to we, we want to assess more. If, if they don't, if their projections of sales don't turn out what it is, then we're the the fee is it, going to be significantly less than what we've seen earlier. What they're off, I, I mean, they've taken this section out. Yeah. Um, because it, it was related to the fixed sums. That's that's the current proposal. Um, but that but that is the reality. I mean, if, if all of a sudden their gross sales are $5, then the reality is, because we signed this, we get 3% of $5. If their gross sales are $500 million, then we get 3% of $500 million. That's, that's the risk and reward above, but we always have to demonstrate, from my read, we have to demonstrate the community impact and we have to tie a dollar amount to how we have to quantify the impact to the community at some level. It may not be annually. That's my, that's, that was my question, Chris. yeah. yeah. I, think my, but it, I don't believe the word annual is in the statute. Yeah. If, you're on, if you're on either extreme, maybe the answer is obvious, but you're, you're somewhere in the middle. You're not getting the 50 million, say it's only, I don't know, 500,000, half a million a year. Instead of the, the four to eight million that they're projecting, you're only getting half a million. And, and our three percent of that is that enough to to cover our community impacts? 
we, again, we, I think as we talked about, well, you can't last time, we don't know. We don't know because no, no, no. we don't know what the impacts are. Okay. So we need to we can't. It cannot. By statute, it says it cannot exceed three percent of growth. So even if our impacts were greater we can't okay. statute caps at 50% okay. of the gross also. Yes. So is this what our attorney is commenting on this the removal of this section? Basically, I'm sure the entire, the entire thing. thing. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. okay. So what do we have to do, Brian? Yeah. Uh, I guess I just you know, would want, I mean, it was um, it was very good that they, they, they basically came and met us where we were, which was the same uh, close community agreement that we offered to <coughs> the previous people who were actually going to work at that same site, okay, which was uh, important. Um, and I, you know, you know, given things being taken in and taken out, I guess I, I want to ask to make sure that um, you intend to comply with this host community agreement in good faith. Absolutely. You're, 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 you're absolutely want to, are going to comply in good faith with the terms of the agreement. With, without a doubt, I don't, and, and I think the the removal of that section on on you know from our perspective was because it referred to fixed sums and right. you know didn't fit within the agreement anymore. We weren't we we were not you know as uh, as <clears throat> Mr. Dominus said that there are different opinions on this. We're, we don't we don't by any means believe that this. In, you know, create some affirmative obligation on the town that didn't exist before, or arguably didn't exist before. So I think the, the the it was in there before because we, if we were able to come to an agreement on fixed sums, this was a, an area where you know it, it made sense that we didn't do that because we're agreeing on a fixed sum. Now we've you know come up to your three percent. So uh, you know, I would I would ask that the 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 board uh, take action tonight on on this i don't think that you know subject to any revisions yeah. by town council but i don't think that this provision is you know is, is uh really all that pertinent to the agreement to be completely honest with you um just a question absolutely this the percentage to gross sales i assume is based upon your tax filings but tax filings are private. You're a private company. So what, I'm just wondering what the, what the mechanism in place is going to be so we know what your gross, gross sales are other than, hey, Brian, guess what? We sold so, five million last year. Trust so, us. So as you know, we have to uh, participate in a seed to sale tracking system. So yeah. you know, we have that data. That data is uh, reported to the state. You may have seen uh, an article about uh, the okay. Yeah. Theory of wellness. I mean, it's well. There. Okay. You'll 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 know what the the sales are, and there are ways of verifying that, not just our books, so to speak. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I have a I have an issue, but I and it's not a bad one necessarily, but I'm not sure I'm going to listen to you, so I don't know what to do. Yeah. Well, at, at this point, we won't. Be signing something tonight, but I guess the question on the table is: um, In principle, are we good with this agreement? In principle, um, we need we need uh, details from our council. Right. Presumably, what he would have to say would not be substantive. But that's it's sort of like I think he needs to take our temperature. <coughs> our temperature. My temperature is. They met us where we asked them yeah. to meet us. And then there, in my, and, and I'm only thinking that I might want to ask to suggest we fine tune it based upon what council says on a certain part of it. And it does have to do with what we're reporting, et cetera. Um, yeah. But I'm going to leave that. To, but in, in principle, I'm, I think this is great. And I appreciate the, the work you guys have put into this. Do you have any more to add, Fred? No. no, no. Okay, so is it, this is not something where we need to vote on a continuance. We just expect that it will be on our agenda for the next meeting, and as it gets closer, we can settle on a time. Because I, I can't imagine our council won't get back to us in the next three weeks. Um, I, I'm sure we'll get back to us. Um, the question is whether whether you want to 
take a vote tonight, if, subject to if, council. If you don't take a vote tonight, then the next vote you're going to take is July 31st. Um, and yeah. I, I think yeah. um, you could take a, you could take a vote on the agreement subject to subject to review by council, which isn't the same thing as signing the agreement, but gives um, the folks who are trying to move forward some confidence that they're moving forward with. Well, I think it would allow you to sign the document outside of a meeting if you vote on it tonight. Well, Brian, I think you know what my concern is, and I'm not going to air it now because I don't want to show my cards. But I think you know what I'm, I, I don't know, I don't know what to do there. Uh, yeah, I think it, if, if the board's going to discuss it, it's to be discussed in open meeting. So, well, and, and again, it's not. You guys are going to love it. These guys might not. Um, depending upon what we have to demonstrate in terms of impact, and again, I don't understand. I don't know the the calendar impact because impacts can happen several years after whatever happens happens. Um, but I am of the mind to cap it at some point because I could be proven wrong. But I'm hard pressed to believe, let's say you guys, again, have $500 million in sales, in gross sales. I'm hard pressed to believe that we can demonstrate that 3% impact. Maybe, again, but maybe I'm wrong, so I don't know how to do that because I want to cover our bases, but I also, unless we put it in escrow or something, but I also don't want to have this, this cash sitting around that we can only utilize to offset a negative impact. And if we can't demonstrate that negative impact and we've spent the money, we're in trouble. But we don't, yeah, but we don't. We don't know, I get that. Sure. So so, right. so the so money I, has I, to go in escrow or something. I don't. I, I think that's a problem for another day. Yeah. We're, we're looking I think ahead if, if, if things should happen. And I don't think anybody can predict that. But then, but then it's allowed to put to put the money in, in some form of escrow. I, 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 I have to. Yeah. Because yeah. you can't just go to the general fund because that that goes to free cash eventually if it's not spent, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, lastly, in terms of budget, <coughs> we're not going to budget this money. That, that's that's my point. We don't know that they're going to be. So we will create some type of fund. You would have to yeah. it. You'd have to spend it over here. Okay. Right. As long as that fund exists, because I don't want to get caught short because of the unknowns. That's my yeah. point. And towns are asking for that. And yeah, right now you have to get it by a special act of the legislature, but maybe that will change. And, uh, and, and there are I mean there are ways to do that. It is but I but I think the problem you're alluding to is that's a problem for another day. when we know more. And as far as uh, 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 setting it up in a fund. There's been articles in the paper where certain communities have set up a uh, called a stabilization fund for receipts of marijuana sales or whatever, community impact stuff, and it's in that stabilization fund. And to use it, it has to come out of that fund for legitimate purposes. Right, but, well, but because I, I so, can foresee the possibility, just hypothetically, that at some point we would find it or some board would find it necessary or important, whatever term you want to use, to, to, to give some of that money back if it's just not going to be spent. And I just want to make sure there's a mechanism in place to do that. That's a, yeah, that's a, that's a what if, and it's, I really think that's a problem. For well, as, as long as I'm comfortable that there is a mechanism to address yeah. the what if. Yeah. If there's know, no yeah. mechanism to address the what if, I have yeah. a problem. I think there is. But I think we haven't implemented it immediately, but we won't see money from this for quite some time. I, I get that. Yeah, that we establish some kind it's of an fund. It's for an administrative it. problem. In terms of, well, not yeah. it's not a problem, but it's an administrative action. It's an administrative right. action that is allowed by statute. That might require yes. a town meeting vote. It, it, yeah. may, it, there may be, it may take several steps. I'm of the opinion that DOR will probably take some action in the near future to enable all communities to easily create a stabilization fund for this kind of stuff. Okay, I, I just want to make sure that mechanism exists because yeah. I don't want us to not yeah. have that mechanism because that would be a dangerous path. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay. 
So um, we, I guess the conclusion would be, we agree about this, and barring substantive changes by council, then you're saying we would be okay signing that outside of the meeting. No, and but you would have to vote. If you're voting, I can't. I can't just say I think we all agree. I have. We have to actually vote. Right. Okay. After. Council comments, or are you talking voting now? I, well, voting they're now? talking about voting now. Uh, if there are substantive agreement, uh, uh, substantive changes that council recommends, then uh, we would Just not sign it. Right. So we would vote that we agree uh, on the, the conditions, yeah. and then when council's had time to review it, assuming there are no substantive changes, we can sign it. But we don't have to wait till July thirty first to sign it. We could sign it before that, as long as we vote in public session. Okay. okay? So that's the idea. So. The, the, yes, the final action you would be taking, yeah. the critical action is that you'd be voting for approval with the signatures from Okay. So, shall I take a crack at a motion then? Sure. Uh, okay. Uh, I move that we uh, accept the agreement as proposed, uh, pending uh, review of council. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> okay. Good, and that means you've got at least sooner than otherwise. Yes, we really appreciate it. That'll help help us to if if when you ultimately or if you ultimately sign without comments, it'll uh, help us to get into the state application process much more quickly. So we really appreciate all of the the time that you you spent on this issue, we recognize it's important to you, and, yes, and really yes. appreciate your efforts, and and also like the fact that you're holding the businesses uh, here accountable, and hope that you do the same to us. Okay, great. Thank Thanks, you. Sir. Thank you. Okay. All right. So we're um, the next appointment is seven fifteen. So we're a little bit ahead. Um, so I'm gonna. I, looking around. I don't know that there's more people coming, yeah, but maybe there could be, so I want to go ahead and wait till 7.15 to do the uh, the Historic Society uh, storage shed item. So shall we go up to um, old, yeah, A is also going to take some time, so that won't be a 10 minutes. Yeah, let's go to uh, old business item B uh, to discuss the proposed repair replacement of siding at the firehouse station. Is, uh, Fire Chief, why don't you come you to the front row? Well, How's Hyder the back row? What are you talking about? Oh, yeah, but just get, put your lovely face up here so we can get around the camera. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So we've been back and forth on this a few times with different people having different questions. And my understanding is the situation right now is that you and the highway superintendent and was there one other person? <coughs> and Fred are all in agreement about what needs to be done going forward. It turns out to be the very thing that was put on the table the very first time. So we've had a lot of time for questioning and, uh, and you know, figuring out is that really gonna work. Um, so at this point, I don't know what we need to do, but I guess if there are any further questions about how that repair should be made, that should probably come out. And do we need to vote to proceed on that? Because the uh, money's already been appropriated. Money's been appropriated. Um, and I don't know if it's a vote or a... I think sort of just to discuss it, what we had done in the past, how we got here was, there, I heard it was some capital projects that we the town meeting and asked for your yeah. vote or blessing or go ahead to, yeah. to, to move forward to the, move forward with these, except for the fire station. So if, if there's any last discussions that we want to have about it, do. Yeah. Like, like you said, um, I met with John, Keith, and Fred, and we just slowed it a little bit more closely. Um, I can speak personally. It's a, a little bit, a little bit more rough shape than I thought it was. And I originally thought that that patching might be an option, but looking at it closer in terms of all the spots where it's beginning to rust through, sort of across the whole face of the siding, and putting holes in John's fire station with the key. You know, <coughs> you realize that it's really oxidizing from underneath the paint and it's probably not feasible to, yeah. um, to 
try to scrape it and ink it. Or the other problem is that that the, the, the siding on the fire station. The other option was to, to tear off the metal siding and put on the metal siding. The, yeah. the problem is that the um, the rigid foam insulation is is adhered to the metal. So if you take that out, yeah. you're taking everything out. You need to reinsulate the building, which will drive up the costs. I don't know if you want to add anything. Yeah. Uh, I think Fred had the most questions, so you'd be interested. Yeah, it, it looks, yeah, after looking at it in further detail with these uh, two or three people. Yeah, I agree that not only putting on the vinyl siding is uh, the best thing to do right now. Uh, we talked about some about getting an, an alternate bid to go down to the say ground level with the siding, the whole side rather than halfway. I think John's aware of that, and we'll, mm -hmm. we'll look at that. The other two concerns, and I guess you probably need to talk to the siding people how they address this is there's going to be moisture behind the vinyl. Do they put a Tyvek or some moisture barrier on there? And they, they don't, don't want. To, I understand they don't want a moisture barrier because they don't want to lock it. Well, though that breathes, but it does it allows air movement but not water or moisture. I, I don't know all the specifics of Tyvek or vapor barriers, but you may want to just talk about that. And the other thing, that sill there, if you're going to go siding further down, how are you going to protect to, if there is moisture back there from landing on that sill? You may need to caulk all of that sill all the way around. So that's not a continuous there, problem. There should be no moisture. Well, you there never should know. be no moisture know, that goes behind, gets behind the vinyl siding. But ask, I, I guess, ask the siding people. They're the ones who know other, other concerns, I, I think. They should know about okay. that. Other than that, no, I, I think uh, uh, go ahead and I guess seek bids for, for the, the repair of the siding or, or installing the new siding there. Is this a state bid scenario? Pardon? We can just bid local. Be local bid, sir. Well, we don't have to advertise for yeah. yeah, the Yeah, they don't have to advertise. Just on that, John? Okay. So, um, the, I have no problem with making a, a motion to vote. I move, move that we move forward on this capital project post, well, I don't want to say post haste, but it's about time. Do you have a second? Have a nice time. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
they exist. Well, they, they met, when did you meet? Yesterday? Monday? Monday. Okay, the minutes of that are all right? Yes, Frank. Okay, I, I know. Okay. This one I'll put on proof yet, but. I, okay, I didn't realize they'd come that soon. Most of the minutes don't come that soon, so I don't think we're going to. All right, we have ourselves a town meeting. Okay. So for the, since we got so many people, our next meeting on July 31st, there'll be a special town meeting to talk about those articles. Um, we'll start our usual meeting at six, and then special time, we'll break whatever we're doing, special time meeting at seven, uh, and then we'll go back to select board business afterwards. Uh, bring your kids, bring popcorn, bring something to drink. It's gonna be a really hot night, and it's gonna be like must see, must see TV. I bet you we won't have this back table. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. We still have a couple more minutes. Um, you want to defer the chest on the yeah. conversation to the 31st so we get more people? Oh, there's one. Don't. Because I, if I get out by 8, we're going out for dinner. Anyway, not you and me. Uh, my, my husband and me. I understand. Um, yeah. Well, you can come with us if you want. But anyhow, um, the under new business, we have uh, someone to consider for town building custodian position. Yep. Uh, so why don't we move to that one? because that should, I, I believe that will be fairly quick. Sure, this, this is to fill the, the newly created six hour position, six hour per week position, not six hours per year position, um, to primarily take care of this building and the, uh, the town hall uh, with the possibility of it uh, extending to Hurley if, if, if we feel that's the best option. Um, six hours per week, we uh, put the advertisement out and we received uh, one, one uh, person of interest and that was Bill um, and Keith and I met with Bill last week to talk about the position and his experience and um, his interest in, and um, he's currently a, a daytime custodian at, at Franklin Tech um, he has many years experience at, at also at elementary school in Greenfield being a custodian and um, he's very interested in the position as um, so it really side work to complement his other his other job it's so. really only six hours a week. And it's That's just custodial work. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not, it's not any maintenance yeah. on traditional custodial work. Because I'm part of us believe that you can do all those buildings in a six hour period. Well, that's what we have done in two buildings. Yeah. Just yeah. Three hours for, say, here to work clean bathrooms, sweep floors. Yeah, and it, there's going to be items that are going to be a little more involved. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's why he's under Keith's, because there are some times when he'll, there'll be something he can't do on his own, and so Keith has the resources to be able to you know, allocate some of his crew when there's a two-person job to be done. So, yeah. And uh, I, from looking at his resume, he looks like he would be a qualified candidate, and I'm glad you met with him and you're happy with his prospects. Um, I don't know if we have, if it's a vote, so is this, or that's a. Is this an just a one year for one year? This position, how? What's the term of the? It would be an it would be an employee. So it would be employees on an ongoing basis. Ongoing basis. Okay. And then the personnel policies apply. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I would know we let them go right ahead with this uh, well qualified candidate. Uh, Second. Yes. Yeah. Second. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Second. Uh, all, yeah, all in favor of making this appointment? Okay, good. All right. Well, it's like one minute. I think that's close. Cool. I think probably we'll be, we'll be good if we can start now. Um, so the topic of the moment is the way the Historical Society is here to talk about the placement of a storage shed behind Town Hall. We've had some chat about this at the last couple of meetings and I know it's working its way through the the system of uh, the, let's see I think we've heard from the building inspector and from the historical commission so why don't I yeah so turn just, over. just to recap um, the way the historical society has proposed putting a, a 10 by 14 shed um, uh, behind the town hall um, I contact the building inspector to, to figure out what needs to be done in terms of, uh, uh, from his end, in terms of zoning. Um, 
So he said that it doesn't require any building permits or zoning permits, but the shed should comply with uh, the zoning setbacks, like all sheds need to in, in town. Um, so I believe um, it's 15 feet from accessory accessory buildings. No accessory building or structure shall be located in the required front area. No accessory building should be located in any side yard near to the side lot line than 20 feet or any rear yard near to the rear lot line than 20 feet or near to another principal or accessory building than 15 feet. So that means um, it needs to be 15 feet off the, the back of the town hall. It needs to be 20 feet off um, the back property line. Is it 15 feet? 15 feet, yeah. Off the back of the town hall. Um, so that sort of answers that question. As if, it, if it's going to be there, that's worth zoning. I mean, it says 15, 15 feet off. It means it has to be the closest wall of the shed and the closest wall of the town hall up to 15 feet. Yeah, that would be my understanding. I thought that was. They're proposing four feet. So I thought they were proposing four feet, so that sounds. Yeah, like it's going to have to be. I don't think that's allowed, absent of variance. So is there enough? I don't enough, think you have a strong case for the variance. Is there so, enough space there? You've got yeah. 15, 10, and then 20 to the lot line, right? Um, we would. I would like to remeasure because uh, um, yeah, the rear lot line is not easily discernible through all the right. and ivy. I was just asking right. on the map. Is that line that's labeled 20, is that the lot line, or is that just basically the end of the flat part? That's the number, that's the number for the, the, the sill fence. 20 is the sill fence. Okay. So I'm not, that was a, oh. a scale, whatever you want to say on the side, that refers to uh, item 20. Yep, so this would have to be shifted as it's shown. Yeah. And that's... Uh, those are uh, more or less the scale, that's four feet. Then basically it would have to start roughly where the, the farthest end of the shed is would be actually be where the nearest step would be, and it would be a little further away. Yeah. And, and if, if, if that is, is true that we have to be that far away, uh, I guess I have some concern of the, uh, the leach field. The leach field is not shown correctly here. On this diagram, and it's not a leach field. It's a it's a leach pit that has, if you want to call it, pipes coming out from the center in each direction to drain that pit. It is not a leach area like the size of this room behind here, because uh, that was redone back in in uh, I was looking at it in August of '84. The Board of Health approved the design of that leach pit. There should be records of that. Board of Health here, and that needs to be clearly identified. Even if you go with this, with this uh, layout that's, that's you handed us today, or we have to adjust the distance, that needs to be clearly identified where that is and where the leach lines actually go. If if we are to push it back, it, it would be worth seeing where that is. Um, again, is it sloping at that point? Not at ten, not at ten, no. or four feet, not at fourteen feet, but it's not sloping back. Though. Keith right. knows where that. But like this region, those are not contour lines. That no, slow. Yeah, we've had the pit dug up. Yeah, we dug it up. But yeah, the, the pipes kind of, if I recall correctly, the pipes kind of come out. It's kind of like a spoke wheel almost. Yeah, the pipes right. kind of come out in different directions. Different directions. But I, I believe that there is. I, I think I've seen something. While we were trying to find this a map, so it, it's a consideration we can look at. There, there was a map, you know, I have a copy that shows the dimensions from the old town hall, the dimensions to locate that pit, and how the lines went and were changed to feed that pit yep. from the town hall. That's what this shows the dimensions, and it does show stubs coming out of that, but that plan didn't show the exact dimensions of the stubs. Thinking the Board of Health should have that somewhere. Shouldn't our conversation be around whether we are comfortable with the placement of the shed? This is why 
we expanded Keith's job originally so that he can deal with these details and that this board, which perhaps today but perhaps down the road tomorrow may not have that type of expertise, that's why we hired Keith to do what he did. So I think our conversation centers around whether we're comfortable with this request and if we're comfortable with the concept of the request, then Keith and Brian and the building inspector and all the other people who want to be involved or need to be involved, then make sure it happens in the appropriate way or if there's no way to do it, they say it's not possible. But we are here to not build the shed, but to make sure that the shed's okay or not okay as a request. That, that's my take on it. I, I'm sorry if I look frustrated, but we're not architects here. We're, we're giving our blessing or not. Uh, uh, besides this board, who would make sure that the, um, you know, the, the spacings and locations and so on are? You're, you're saying that it should be on the lap of the building superintendent. Well, that was the proposer, the one that's proposing the, uh, the shed, should yeah. do the investigation and see where it, where, where it would best fit on the property and whether mm -hmm. it meets all the requirements of the building inspector and the uh, Board mm -hmm. of Health. I guess it should be the town trying to justify where that is, just like any homeowner does. Like, no, I, I, I always saw our role as oversight. Oh, okay. So if we see something and we notice, hey, it's not 15 feet from the building, which is what our code says it needs to be, then we, you know, we can at least give the feedback of, well, I think you have to look at the location. Um, yeah, I think we can, I, I, I get your point though, is that we're really here in principle, do we agree that a shed should go up? Of course, any shed should be compliant with our bylaws, but maybe our, you're saying our question is slightly different than um, detailed oversight. It's more kind of bigger picture oversight. It's, it's, it's a little micromanagement. And as far as, as uh, okay, the concept of, of a shed there, I, I guess we, we heard at our last meeting that there is, we we'll call it just stuff, whatever, wanna, whatever that means, in the center school that has to be relocated somewhere. And there's organizations in there that are looking to put it somewhere. We're to build this building behind the town hall. Uh, should these other agencies, organizations, whatever, be allowed to use that to store some of their stuff as well? Uh, otherwise, we're, we're, I guess, approving something for one, right now, private agency in town that wants to store on town property. If another agency wants to do that, are we going to have another shed somewhere else? Or do we allow them to put stuff in this one shed as well? And to, to decide on, on that, I, I, I don't think we're ready right, right now. And the reason I say that, in our, in our last board meeting here, I guess the board wanted Brian and I to look at what else needed to be stored at the town hall that is currently in the center school and whether we can accommodate that in the existing space within the town hall or an additional building. Okay, Brian and I have not met to do that or have not looked at the center school exactly to see what's still what needs to be relocated in the town hall, if anything. So I, I think before any decision made on the, sh the shed and the I mean, in fact, the size, I mean, if we decide there's a lot more material that needs to be stored there, I think I would like to defer it until our next meeting until Brian and I get a chance to look at it. Well, I, I guess I'm looking at it a little bit differently, that all the other entities that have things stored at the center school are departments of the town. and. You, you, you were careful to say stuff that would need to be stored at town hall, but I suspect there's very little there that needs to be stored 
at Town Hall, that we have a whole warehouse here. And if there are filing cabinets or uh, you know, old papers, um, uh, equipment that we're saving for spare parts or whatever it may be, that it's town-owned equipment there and that we have that warehouse. There's still, there's lots of empty shelves back there too, so we have things that go on shelves. We actually have space to accommodate storage needs for things that maybe haven't been taken from the center school yet, but we still don't want, are not yet ready to, to throw away. So, so th there are other alternatives. Right. That this particular one for the historical site is because this is where they are. They're already renting a portion of that building from us and that would be the place to store those kinds of things. And they're not things that need uh, you know, air conditioning or heating. You know, it could, it could be an outdoor unseasoned, unseasoned, unconditioned space. Okay, but I wasn't so. referring to town-owned stuff in the center school. There is, there is, there is a private organization that, that has met there and has their stuff there that now meets at the town hall. Which organization and, well, is that? The, the Grange specifically meets there and they have stuff that needs to be moved somewhere to the town hall. So, so the Grange is not coming and ask us about that. Well, they know the Grange was here in our last meeting talking about that. Yeah, but they, did, they didn't come to us and ask for space to store their stuff somewhere. Well, then we got into the discussion of Brian and I looking to see what was there that needed to be stored. Right. I, I, I understand, but I, I really don't see delaying taking the next steps on this because another organization might also need some storage space that they haven't even thought about yet and haven't had, you know, taken the trouble and the time to you know, organize themselves to figure out where it would be a good place. Well, we haven't asked any of the organizations that have stuff there to do that. It's, well, not, our, it's they, not our place we didn't, ask. we didn't well, ask the Historical Society either. They came to us proactively to take care of. I'm going to... No, but we're trying to yeah. vacate the building by the end of the year, and you know if we don't uh, take an action, that stuff is still going to be there on December 30th. I'm going to make a suggestion, and I, I'm guessing there are some people who will embrace this idea, and others who may not embrace this idea. But I genuinely believe that the shed's a good idea. That being said. I think the shed should be under the auspices of the historical commission and that motions or, or actions need to take place where the historical society, while not losing its tax status, becomes a project of the historical commission. And so the shed would essentially be gifted by the Historical Society to the Historical Commission, and then we don't run into the problem of 501c3 nonprofit organizations making requests like this. It would be a request technically of the Commission, and again, the Society would become a project of the Commission. It's cleaner that way. The Society maintains its autonomy to the greatest extent possible. The Society still looks over are, are, for lack of a better term, the, the, the artifacts, whatever you want to call them, in, 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 the, in the building, other ones that we acquire down the road. The Historical Society is a critical part of this town. And I think beyond a small handful, and forgive me if I'm, if I'm not giving credit, credibility where, where credibility is due, most people in town wouldn't be able to tell you the difference between the society and the commission. And I hate to say it, but they probably can't. They just know that both are cr critical, vital organizations, and they probably <coughs> work together. But they can't. They don't know whose domain is what or whose auspices are what or what. It's cleaner if we make the society a project of the commission and give the society as much autonomy as is possible as a project of the commission. I think we're, we 
need to further investigate that. There's more to it than just saying they're part of the historic commission. Uh, but why, why, why doesn't the, the I'm not sure that's true, Fred. It is. They own other property. They have. They have other other commitments, other liabilities, other leases, other agreements, and we're now going to support this agency that does all these other things uh, that we have no say in. I, I think the uh, an option uh, an option would be rather than than the uh, historic society owning this building is why doesn't the historic commission propose the building? And then decide on who should have space in it, whether it's Historic Society, whether it's Grange, whether it's uh, uh, Water Department, or, or whatever. I, I don't know if other agencies want to have space to want to store stuff in there. And it would take us out of, out of the role of deciding what gets stored in there by what agency. Why don't we have the historic he's commission. He's telling us what size shed can fit there if it could fit at all, and, and then decide all this. He may come back and go, we're too close. The pins are all there, so it wouldn't be hard to thank, figure out. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Dan. Um, I think what John is saying is something, I don't think we should hold up the project of the shed because you think the Historical Society should be part of the Historical Commission. It might well be a question that we ought to look into and see if those two organizations want to get married, so to speak. I mean, that I'm using a colloquialism, and I'm not trying to make light of it. Um, but I, I don't think this group wanting to put up a shed that doesn't, um, doesn't break any of our bylaws is, needs to be held up by that particular um, I was trying to go through here. There, there was a suggestion in there that you have that there be some kind of a memorandum of understanding uh, when this uh, is put in. That and I'm, re I'm going to remember incorrectly, but that it may be that the shed is owned by the town and is part of what we lease to the historic society. If, although I, I'm having trouble finding that in the um, meeting packet here, so I, I may be remembering that wrong. That. I, I think we can come to a good accommodation on this. I, I, I got to say, it's not a compelling argument that somebody else might come up and want to put up a shed somewhere else, because there's probably not room for another shed, for one thing. And we, they have other storage options in conditioned spaces. You know, if the Grange wanted to store all their flags someplace, and they put them in a nice box, I would I'd vote to put them in our nice conditioned warehouse over there and let them store it there. I mean, you're, you've got a real, like a hypothetical, maybe we have this storage problem with all these different uh, agencies and, and I just don't see that problem <coughs> knocking on our door, beating down the door, looking for putting up sheds all over the place. Okay, that, it's just, I don't really see that problem happening and I don't know what else is really going on in the background. Or to direct them then who? Um, to, uh, that, was, that was more kind of the hypothetical problem of we, we need, suddenly need to store all this stuff that's in the center school. And I, I think we have plenty of places to store things. Wow. And uh, if there's any group who's having trouble storing their things, they can certainly come in and, and have a chat and we may be able to accommodate them. I don't know. But I don't think we should say, oh, if we support the Historical Society putting in a shed that doesn't break any of our bylaws and is reasonable and the Historic Commission signs off and Building Inspector signs off, I don't think we should say that is the precedent that says we have to go find space to accommodate a shed for everybody who walks in the door. I don't think that's a precedent. And I don't think it means we have to build a shed for everything that's in the center school either. And I'm, I'm agreeing with most of what you're saying, Joyce. Yeah. The, where the precedent was set, and I'm not saying it's a bad, it, I'm not saying that the decision was one that I don't, I don't agree with, mm -hmm. but the precedent was set when we had a C3 take up residence in the town hall to begin with. That's where the precedent was set. That being said, again, the historical society is an important fabric of this community. Mm -hmm. And it's, but it is why I genuinely believe, and I would 
will continue to push that it become a project of the of the commission because it is cleaner. And are you there saying are, that there that should are, be a condition on moving forward to the next step I'm, of finding a good location? I'm I'm saying that I think that when we approve it, if we approve it, we should approve it with the understanding that these conversations are going to happen and they're not going to happen next year, they're going to start to happen right away. I, I mean, if that's okay, a condition, yeah, that's, but, that's, but the that, conversation okay. has to take place. It, there, are, there are storage issues beyond what's in the center school. Yeah. Uh, so let, let's not, but let's not say just because an organization doesn't, we're a town of 1,500 people and we can't be running around saying, well, you're part of this and you're part of that. I'm worried about tax status precedent. I'm, 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 I know it's not a, a, a town bylaw, but we are supporting certain nonprofit organizations more than others, and that's something that I worry about. So I, I think that we should approve this shed, but I think we need to start a schedule, and I'm happy to serve on this committee to talk about how the commission is going to take on the society as a project, but allow the society to, and, and again, it's, it's a legal issue at some level, figure out what level of, of autonomy is maintained by the society because the society needs to have that, that autonomy. But we, we have to have this conversation. We cannot keep kicking the can down the road, yeah. which this town is really right. good at kicking cans down the road away. Right. Uh, yeah, and, and, and I, I agree. It's a conversation that should be had. I don't think everything else needs to be held hostage to it. No. It sounds like I, we agree. I wish it was a request made, made by the commission and not the society, that being said, but I'm not going to hold no, it up. I, I think that needs to be discussed between the commission and society and see whether they even want that, whether that's a, a feasible option before the board even gets involved in, in deciding that. Uh, and the other point, you're saying, why can't some of this stuff be stored here? Well, I could ask, why can't the stuff that's being proposed for the, the shed be stored here for the one or two times a year that it's, uh, we, we heard is being used? Why can't that happen? I, I did not say it can't happen. Yeah. Uh, the stuff that, that is used for meetings and whatever, I think, is, is already in, in the building with... Uh, most of it, I guess. I don't yeah, know if all of it is, but, but if this stuff in the shed is not used routinely, then it's like you're saying, why can't it? We got plenty of storage room here. Yeah, but let's assume, let's assume that the town really does enjoy the Memorial Day and Fall Foot Festival. Let's just assume that, hypothetically, that it's a, those are really two good events. Okay. And if the Historical Society slash Commission suddenly determines that the logistics aren't, don't make it possible to run those things anymore. Shame on us. So is everything that's being stored in the shed pristine historical, of, of historical significance? Probably not. But, but and, and, and by the way, if they can store those things, maybe we can have more than two. Maybe we can build actually a community within the center of town around the assets that we've created between the town hall, et cetera. But what are we doing? We're talking about a shed. Well, we're talking of private use of town yeah. property. That's well, and that's why I'm trying to remedy that. And I, and, and, yeah. I, I, I there are people who encourage are, this conversation yeah. between the Commission and Society to continue, okay. whether they want to have it or not. So, 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 <laughs> so. I, think, I, I think they probably heard you on that. They can comment as well. But uh, my understanding is they may have an answer for at least one of your questions, which is why can't why do, you, why do you need this shed? Why can't you store it at 4 Sandy Lane? Can I address that? So maybe I should uh, let the, the applicants here. Because when we were at the center school, we had our festival at the center school, and our tables and chairs and all the benches in the milk bottle were there. And we just carried them up and down the stairs. Now, if we don't have anywhere at the town hall for the tables and chairs, they would have to be hauled from another location. And it's a lot of work, all the tents, all the tables, all the chairs, and there's less and less volunteers every year to mm -hmm. want to do that heavy lifting. So if we had the tables and the benches stored on site, then we would just bring them out of the shed and put them back in. And like you said, they're dry 
possessions. They just sit there. They don't need any special air. Mm -hmm. um, so it's because of having to haul everything around town, you know, to put the festival on okay. in the spring and in the fall. Okay. Maybe we could have more festivals than just two with that with the central location. I think. Let's be creative. I don't <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's be a community. I would just say it's not just the Historic Society Commission that does the, you can do the festival and do a great job, but it's also, we, we, we can't forget, the Grange is the one that organizes the Memorial Day program. The gem done all that. I'm sorry, so. the Grange does the parade. Well, okay. The Historic Society don't know all the, does the festival. I don't know all the details of, right, but, but the Grange is heavily in, in, involved in that, so we, we can't say that it's all historic commission or society events that are happening in the center of town. Yeah, I think, I think the point is the fall festival is the historical society. The Memorial Day, I would, I would the like first portion is the Grange and the yeah. second portion right. is the historical society. Right. I would like to believe, because the Grange seems to be the, yeah. at the epicenter of this conversation, that Perhaps the two organizations, we, we should approve this shed. The Historical Society is going to store, the commission is going to store whatever it needs to store. To Dan's point, we're going to assess the, the, the capacity needs and what can fit. And then, you know, it, shockingly, the two organizations may chat at some point and say, yeah, let's help each other out because we do depend upon each other. I mean, let's. Uh, so who, I, who are we asking to move forward on this, the Historic Society or the Historic Commission? If we, if we agree to yeah. move forward, because we're talking to different agencies now. The, the request was made by the Society, and I would, and I would, and I would say the, re, the, the approval needs to go to the Society with the caveat that I want to see the, the conversation take place. And, and if they don't want to have the conversation, I think they do, I want to know why not. Well, but that's why I want to approve it. I, I, I guess I, I would agree with part of the the conversation takes place, but not so much that the, uh, the two uh, agencies are all under one. I, I guess they need to discuss this and maybe uh, come up with a resolution. I, I, I don't think it should be contingent on a historic society, a historic commission, Overseeing Historic Society. Yeah. Dee, do you want to say yes, something? Yes, um, the proposal by Jonathan has been talked about at our society meetings over a year, maybe two years ago. So we are not opposed to that at all. It was felt that if we tried to bring that to bear while the town hall was being renovated, it would muddy the waters that we needed to get the town hall renovated and get us in there and I want people to have it in the minutes that we are paying utilities. We're not in there as a free, free yeah, as we were. We're right, right. We are. So we are not opposed to any of what he's saying, but we have to meet with them. We have had, um, in fact, I had an email from Donna Wiley, president and um, chairman of the, you may have gotten a copy that mm -hmm. said, she's again supporting this, but we have been to the, Commission, we met with all five members and they said this is a great idea. So the historical commission is in agreement with our yeah. needs. And my understanding is they, 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 you would have to continue working with them yes. on the exterior appearance that they really have the final, well, maybe the final, or between you, the final say on what it looks like. Well, one of the comments that, that we read, that was read by them, was that it had to be in. Uh, What's the word? Consistent with the town hall, and it's pointed out that it cannot be because there is a rule with the Mass Historical Commission. Even our addition, Fred knows that, you cannot mirror the town hall in its spectacular condition. It has to have a little discrepancy or whatever. And so that's why our shed, am I right, Brian? And I think that was what Donna was bringing to our attention. So we will comply with all of the needed uh, requests or uh, whatever. The, uh, there's a preservation restriction on the town hall and on the town hall property. So in any appearance, the materials.
material, the size, the shape, windows, doors, all of these mass historic condition. Okay. Joyce, I, I would encourage a motion. I would, uh, I would be interested in hearing a motion. I, I would make a motion to um, give this board's blessing for the shed to be built per the request of the historical society, um, and that we strongly encourage conversations on the administrative logistics between the two organizations to um, take place very quickly, as opposed to sometime down. And, and that Keith uh, and anyone else who needs to be involved in the dimensions and the, the, the to, zoning. Yeah, to the, make sure we to make sure it's, it's done correctly. The floor will yeah. 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 Uh, so, and uh, okay, I would second that motion. I, I, I guess I would. I, I think the the uh, as I've said earlier the. Historic Society being under the commission is a separate activity. And there's further discussion and a lot more investigation by both agencies and Brian and whatever that that shouldn't be part of this condition. If the two want to agree, if the two want to discuss it and like they have been doing, that, that's great. But as far as combining the two agencies, one under the other, I think that should be a separate issue, not part of this. Okay. I think John just said that they we strongly encourage them to have the conversation, which is not making anything contention on the job. Well, Jen, that's how you interpret that, but Okay. Well, shall we vote? It's up to you, you're the chair. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Sounds like we we made a little bit of progress. Excellent. Okay. And all right, so we're up to, we have basically three things plus town administrator updates. I don't think we'll be, I don't know if we'll be out by eight, but maybe it'll be close. Okay. <laughs> so uh, the next item uh, is the continuation of our conversation with uh, residents of town center along Chestnut Plain Road. Um, the, who came to us uh, at our last meeting and I'm understanding that since then, uh, Ryan has done a little bit of research. Yep. We're trying to pull up. He gave us sort of an executive summary of that. Uh, and it's in one of these folders. But why don't I just turn over to Ryan while I hunt for the, uh, for the right document here. Um, I think it was May 29th. It was May 29th. Um, residents from Chester Plain Road came and, and talked about Depends how we group them for uh, four or five uh, different concerns, and at that time, um, I was going to talk to the department heads and sort of try to pull together an outline as to possible recommendations and, and some research on the issues. Uh, come back to the board, and then at that point, after we have a discussion, I think it would be worthwhile to, if we're going to make edits to this memorandum, uh, send a communication out to. I think Melissa was a spokesperson. Um, to, to let them know sort of what our ideas are, even though they're here tonight, to, to hear them and, and uh, possibly be part of the discussion. But um, so I'll just run through what um, what I had written in this memorandum. So the first one was, was discussions about uh, truck traffic and engine braking. Um, and one of the questions uh, from the group was whether it's possible to. Or it was a bigger question as to what can be done. One of the questions was whether you could adopt a bylaw that prohibits engine braking. Um, and I did a little research, and there are um, the ones that I found were cities that they have um, no engine braking ordinances. Some of them have them. Some of them will prohibit engine braking on certain roads. Some of them will prohibit it across the entire city. Uh, the city of Northampton uh, takes a little bit of a different approach. It um, prohibits engine brakes with the Essentially, were the were the mufflers not compliant with federal, state, or local law? And it also mentions it also acknowledges the fact that the engine brakes serve a safety purpose on large commercial vehicles. So, it, it's something that it's something that needs to be balanced. 
Um, yeah. Keith had a conversation with, with MassDOT. Uh, MassDOT takes the position that it, it does not allow um, uh, no engine braking signs on state highways, on any of its roadways, because it feels that um, engine brakes are uh, a safety component of the vehicle. Um, so that means Route 5 and 10. <laughs> yeah, for us. And it means right by my house. Right every morning. Morning. Yeah. yeah, I hear it every morning. Um, so, uh, with that in mind, um, I think there's a, a couple ways that, that we could try to address this uh, if the board was so inclined. Um, one of the ways, this is probably, this is probably the easiest way, and it, in my opinion, might be more, more effective, is, is to consider the placement of some sign, of signage that says something along the lines of, please respect our neighbors, no engine braking. Um, you're relying on the, the good graces of the people who are using the equipment to, to, to realize that it's a residential area and they've been asked to not use their engine brake. Um, so that's a possibility. I, I think that's pretty low cost. It's the cost to, to produce the signs. Yeah. Um, I would say that you need to also go on Christian Lane as well. Right? Yeah, and there's, there's as, the, as the main thoroughfares from Haydenville to Chestnut Plain, and then maybe go right or left. Right. Yeah. And those are also kind of coming off the hills. So, well. yeah, we would need to find out the, the appropriate uh, placements okay. of those. Um, I'll let you finish, and then Virginia's going to ask you something. It, there's, there's different, are we talking engine noise or, or, or truck noise? Engine braking or truck noise? Because you're going to get truck braking. noise on every, every street it's in town. The it's the braking. That's the braking. And, and yeah. I don't it, know if that's a problem everywhere in town or not. It's. Here, different complaints of different okay. areas. Yeah, but, but those are the, 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 the Haydenville, Chestnut Plain, then Swamp, and Chest and Christian. I, I that's where it. people are going. And yeah, then once they get on 510, Road as well. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on River Road as well, I've heard of I'm sorry? Uh, yeah. complaints on River Road as well. Okay. okay. Uh, truck, trucks are common in town, so. Yeah, I mean, well, you can't uh, see but you, uh, another step to take would be to adopt a general bylaw. Uh -huh. um, Similar to what what some of the cities have done that 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 prohibit engine braking, <coughs> so it gives you the ability to to enforce. Um, yeah. You know, it gives you a second layer of enforcement there. But I, I would I would suggest that adopting the bylaw without the signage is not going to be very effective because nobody's right. going to no, know that the, the that the the bylaw and is enforcement is. Yeah. Um, and the other part. It, it, we have discussions about this all the time is the limited policing resources that we have in town. Even if there is a bylaw, even if there are signs, um, we don't have we don't have the policing resources to sit there and enforce it twenty four seven. So that's, that's I think that's a theme of this of this whole discussion is, is yeah. policing resources and enforcement. Yeah. Um, so that's another option, and then. Um, touched on this a little bit at our last meeting and whether whether it would be feasible um, to do a truck exclusion uh, um, from that um, you know from that uh, along Haydenville Road and Chestnut Plain Road and that's a much longer investigation and discussion with Mass DOT um, I don't want to I don't want to presuppose the the outcome of that discussion but one of the one of the requirements is that you that there be a, a reasonable alternative um, for trucks. Yeah. And I, that, I think that's difficult. Especially as a farming community and their farms all over. Yeah. yeah. So. But, but I think that that doesn't imply that it has to be an alternative within the town. Nope. I mean, no, it doesn't if, imply if you're excluded, the they could go to Northampton and around for the trucks that, that we know just going through. Before we fixed Haydenville Road, they all went to Route 9 through him. Yeah, I know. So that, that is an alternative. And, and I hear it people is. saying before, well, you, that's not an alternative because there's no other place in town for them to go on the Haydenville Road. To me, that's, that's a, I guess, a bogus yeah. argument to say why you should yeah. allow them. Uh, so, so, yeah, so you're Haydenville saying that we don't have to even consider Franklin County, that Northampton is close enough to be considered yeah. an alternative. Yeah, an alternative. Mass yeah. DOT needs. I, I believe Mass DOT is, is the agency that decides right. whether a reasonable alternative exists. So that, right. that's so we don't get to discussions as to 
Um, and Virginia's been waiting really patiently. We went through all of this several years ago, and I don't think we ever came up with a real solution but with the trucks coming over Haydenville Road and down. Yeah. As I say, I don't recall what the resolution was for it, but yeah. I know it has been brought up time and time again. Yeah, I feel like that. I remember this coming up a while back, and that in, in the end, it just it got to the point where people weren't having their windows open anymore because the summer was over, and so they stopped complaining. But then the next year, summer came again, and some of the gun this year, summer came again. So, um, so it's it's not really gonna go away. Right. So it seems worthwhile to pursue at least some of these. Um, I know signage is not free, but is that something you think we have budget for someplace that we could do without too much fuss or mess? Well, Keith can make signs now, right? So oh, capability is, oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, we're okay. part of a cooperative. Cooperative, we can make signs. Yeah. Manufacturing. Uh, there's a um, cost to it, but I think it's less. It's a, okay, so, because I remember in the past sometimes the cost of signs was kind of prohibitive. You, you needed to have really thought about it and, uh, and appropriated it. But if the cost is small enough that it already fits within a budget, we can appropriate it, yeah. then that might be, it seems to me like that's the no-brainer yeah. uh, to do. And uh, well, I guess I feel like the other you, thing, so pardon? Will the state allow you to restrict? Oh, well, we'd be putting up signs that say, please, no engine braking, residential neighborhood, or something like that. So appealing to the the goodness of their hearts. No different than slow children, really. No, yeah, don't yeah, the slow children signs and that sort of thing. So, that, I mean, to, to me, and that seems like like uh, I think the wording here is first logical step um, to do, and as long as we have enough leeway within a budget that we've already appropriated, then I don't see any reason to hesitate on that. And, and we, I would encourage us to combine it with, we have conversations among, amongst us and other appropriate individuals um, as to whether we, we should pursue a, a bylaw at an annual time meeting next year. Yeah, I think that would have to be at an annual time meeting. Absolutely. Uh, there'd be, have to be a bit of work done to, you know, to see what the impacts were going to be and, and so on. But if those are six to 12 month timelines items anyway so I, I would have no objection to uh, people moving forward on those to look into it. The thing we got to remember since maybe the, the last time that Virginia talked about this being an issue recently we've got two new trucking companies in town well not new but within the last several years I mean and are they the ones contributing to this problem? Are they located on Haydenville Road? Yes, on Haydenville Road. Well, yeah. or off of Haydenville Road, one Somewhat, is. Somewhat, but there's probably a hundred trucks a day rolling I, through. I, right. I know, but, but they, come and come and go. they come yeah. and go every day through town as... Uh, oh, I don't disagree, but, but, but I, think I, I see it's, it's flashway logging. It's a lot of logging yeah, trucks. The logging and, trucks. Right, USI with their sewage tanks yeah. and right. on and on and on. It, it, it goes, I mean, they use the they use the jig brakes going uphill sometimes. I know they do on my road. Can they shift? Yeah. I, 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 okay. Let's All right. So can we can we move along? Because we'll be here. Should we address each of these and decide what we're going to do? Something. Action. We're going to take. But I, 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 I suggest that we take at least that first action and yeah. consider the other ones longer term. I mean, I, I won't personally probably go find the bylaw and so on. We could need people to look into that and okay. maybe make a proposal and yeah. proposals have to go through some vetting as we get to town meeting but um, I, I wouldn't have a problem with other people kind of picking up the ball on that and helping figure that out. Uh, yes, just, just say who you are so. Yeah, Melissa Caldwell, so yeah. yeah. Could the conversation with DOT about having a truck exclusion happen at the same time? I mean, that's, oh, yeah, that's, a, a, I mean, that's yeah. not a, doesn't cost that's anything or no. cost your time, which yeah. I appreciate, but that could, Maybe having two, should, yeah, that we know whether happen. it was even possible. Just to, okay. Yeah. Cool. I think I think that would be weighing pros and cons, whatever. Yeah. yeah. So what do we agree on? Doing all three now, or what? Well, no, we're gonna have sign. sign. We're gonna do the signs. We're gonna have okay. conversations have about the viability of two and three. Yeah. Signs pending. 
budget availability of budget. Availability, yeah, right. okay. which we're confident they're. Well, I'm uh, optimistic. Well, optimistic, optimistic that it might already exist. And, 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 and if, you know, we'll have another special town meeting in the fund if we have to appropriate whatever, right? Then maybe we'll do that. It wouldn't be an outrageous plan. Okay. Okay, the speeding issue. Number two, speeding. Um, definitely, a, it's, a, it's a general concern across town, um, to be quite honest. Yeah. Um, and recently, since since I think the May 29th, I think the police have made an effort to try to be up there a little bit more often. Um, I'm not up there, so I, I, I don't really know. Um, I know that they've 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 uh, our mobile radar speed sign is pretty sad shape. Um, you know, the battery is that's that's probably an overstatement. Um, it's it's a battery unit, and they put it up there. It lasts for. Dan keeps track of it. It lasts. I haven't seen it a work day. Yet. It works two days. It lasts for two and days. Then it locks up at twenty-five for two days. I must have missed those days because I haven't seen and it. Then it goes black. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm sort of pre pre uh, highlighting what I'm going to recommend here, but um, it's in rough shape. It needs to be towed. Uh, never mind. It's in rough shape. Um, so possible considerations for addressing it, and really this, these would apply across town, really, except for maybe yeah. the last one, but. Um, you know, the easiest, I, I think, low cost, immediate thing is, is to continue some some uh, more frequent uh, speed limit enforcement by the police department. Don't we still have the third cruiser? Is that gone the way of the Dodo Bird? It's still there. It is. Yeah. I, I remember years ago we put the police cruiser in certain places. No one's in it, but it does slow people down because they don't know that no one's in it. And if, if it's just sitting there, just. Put it on my driveway, I don't care. Park it in front of my house, I don't care. Okay, that's in the minutes, Amy. <laughs> 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 in front of her house. 200 Chestnut Plain Road. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll keep it up. Yeah. I mean, the, I, I hear a rumor that the center school is vacant, so yeah. <laughs> put it there. That's the chief. So, so obviously, uh, obviously just one of the easiest things that is increased sort of speed limit enforcement by the police department. Yeah. Um, but again, that talks about it. With respect to the question about our, our policing resources, right? Because they they have yeah. an entire town to cover. Yeah. Um, the, the second one I thought I'd suggest here is install radar speed signs. Um, so they make a, you, we see them pop. Up, I see them popping up in a lot of towns. There's permanent ones that are attached to poles. There's mobile ones. There's solar powered ones. There's battery powered ones. There's all sorts of uh, of units. There's ones that log data. There's ones that don't. Um, there's, there's a lot of options these days, um, and maybe the installation of a, of a radar speed sign would be a possibility here and in other locations. Yeah, yeah I, I, I strongly think this came up when we were doing complete streets as well, and um, they except this time it was the people on Conway Road, we need uh, this thing on you know, Conway Road. And I was just like, oh, we need these at six other locations in town as well. So those are the complete streets where it started with uh, the, someone put in one request for we need this on Conway Road and turned into, yeah, okay, and another one for River Road, another one for Center Town, another one for North Street, another, and we just like ticked off uh, uh, a, a whole laundry list of places that could use it. So they are incorporated in the complete streets, but um, that may be too long a timeline and it might be that, I mean, from reading what you, you said in the comments section, it, it, the, the cost is medium, which I wasn't expecting necessarily. Right. Um, but if it's really a matter of cost, we should investigate what it costs. What's the definition of medium? Uh, in this case, it's around between three and five thousand dollars. So that's a little. Right. If that's so, if that's well so, we should look into. We should absolutely get data logging. Because that helps us. That would help us deploy police resources more efficiently, harder. If we could be more efficient about that. Like if we, if we're always logging at speeders are always coming between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m., then we know put the police car there between. Does 8 it log that? Do they log? Yeah, they can log. They, they log. Is there the, the one in Sutherland on 116? I've, I've talked with those guys, and it really has dramatically reduced the the speed. The minute people see that. Thing. They they drop. They're not worried about getting together. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah. You're, you're more than three to five for something yeah. like that that logs, or if it works on solar power, 
Yeah. Yeah. Then let's look into it. Yeah. Let me grants. Uh, so then saying we yeah. should we should look into it. Um, we should look into if there are grants, and if not, then maybe our next. Uh, if we can't afford it, one other some other way we could put it as a higher priority in the complete streets because when we do our next complete streets request, you know it's already in there. So it's already in our plan. So we get to say what parts of our plan go in. I don't remember where the priority was for that um, in the original, but it, we don't have to strictly stick to the priorities we set a year and a half ago on that. So it seems to me like kind of the first two, given the limitations of our you know, police coverage, um, are they're sort of, I think we should pursue those. The third one, Install crosswalks with pedestrian crossing signage, but that's going to be happening in about a year, right? With the complete streets um, that uh, we have to spend by next June. It should be done. Yeah, so it should be done <laughs> within uh, less than 12 months. Um, and I don't know, and there was the, like, the speed bumps or speed tables to slow down traffic. That presumably could be a part of that complete streets design. Is the design is just being done now. But it may be, if that makes the cost go over, right. then it may have to be something separate. Yeah, one of, one of, sort of one of the cons of the speed bumps is that a lot of the trucks that are passing through, uh -huh. um, you're going to hear a lot of noise that's going to happen as these trucks cross. Yeah. They're going to use their jake brakes. Yeah. yeah. They're going to use their jake brakes. But Still it's going to, it's going to be, if they have an empty trail or something, you're going to hear crank or empty. I mean, the trucks are dips. Might solve that more than the yeah dips. I know. Oh yeah, then you can you can have oh. plant potholes. Sometimes that bunch of problems. You see them? Oh, I've not seen those. Yeah, I've yeah. seen those. Because then you get who needs a culvert? Yeah. I, I think the, 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 the first two are, are, are great, but but I, I think rather waiting for another complete streets application and. Designing and funding your year to away, uh, I'd suggest the chief submit something in maybe capital improvement program or his budget for next year to buy the equipment to do that. For the radar to make Yes, it would be yeah. in yeah. next yeah. year. Otherwise, you're talking two years away from doing uh -huh. I would agree with that. And, and, and so, uh, investigate grants, right? right. And investigate grants, Because they're going up in a lot of towns, so I've right. saw the finance. When that happens, yeah. usually there's free money available. So yeah. Okay. You guys need to get a member of the finance committee to live in center of you know, the center of town, and yeah. we'll be good. Well, he drives through every day. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, Melissa. Right, Melissa. Yeah. I'm so surprised you have something to say. <laughs> um, when you come down Haydenville Road and you stop or you don't, whatever, you know, yeah. however it goes, I don't think there's a, a speed sign right in front of you that just maybe if you saw it when you gunned it to go down to the Center Street School, maybe you wouldn't if it said the speed limit. So how about a, a speed sign? Like a, sign? a reminder? Well, speed yeah, it's sign. 30 miles an hour here, or whatever it is, it's 30. So, because uh -huh. you're, you're halfway to the school before you know what the speed is supposed to be, so you're just guessing that it's 50 or 45 <laughs> or something. But maybe if it said 25, you'd go, oh, I thought it was oh, 50. 35. Yeah. Uh -huh. What's on the other side, sitting down by the church? Is it one down that way? It says 30. Yep. There's one coming up 25. on the right. It's 25. It's 25. Yeah. Well, the speed limit is 35 unless otherwise posted. So yeah, it's, sure it's, other, it's that, otherwise but, posted. Well, right. they don't. Yeah. 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 You need just. I mean, I talk about it on my road all the time. Easy. 35 unless it's posted otherwise. Yeah, it is posted. Yeah. But keep it open. So the one side that yeah, right the other side the road. Of the I mean, you almost want it to be pointing at the people. Like when you're, you know, when you're hitting that T oh. intersection, you have the sign right there. You do right, 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 right there, right there, right yeah. car sign. Yeah, although maybe there's reasons why you can't do that. Right? We'll, we'll defer to the highway superintendent. We'll get a sign closer yeah. to the town hall. We could get 200 just no point. Right? Okay, it sounds like that's a question to to send on to our to our highway superintendent. Yep. Oh, everybody's favorite topic. Trees in front lawn maintenance. <laughs> um, 
at our last meeting, I think it was that, at that same meeting, we asked the, Donna Wiley was here from the Historic Commission, we asked her to sort of look into the issue of the, the town common or, or what this what this has been used for, how it was laid out, and sort of what's going on with that, with that land. Um, and I, I guess to summarize her letter, it was not much historically has been formally done with that property. Um, there's some vague references about <laughs> grazing milk cows and things like that. Um, but in terms of sort of the town's usage of the property, it's really been limited to around the area around the town hall. Um, when the town, the, the letter also includes, uh, when the town was first established, when it, when it was incorporated, there were several roads that were laid out. 10 rods wide, so it's 160, 165 feet wide. One of them was Chestnut Plain Road, North Street, I think Straits Road, and some of the other roads were laid out 160 feet wide. So we have these really wide strips of land. Um, so Chestnut Plain Road continues to have a very large layout. Uh, uh, I shouldn't say layout, because that's, that's getting the weeds, but <laughs> it, it's very wide. The, the town property is very wide there. Um, and it continues that way, it gets a little bit narrower down towards Hatfield, but by the time you get down to Hatfield, you're probably about 100, 110 feet wide right away. Um, so that's about, uh, it's roughly about two miles of, 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 of width over 100 feet. Um, so the question is, and I think the question that was posed was that, um, is that something that the residents should be taking care of? Um, historically, residents have uh, mowed that area uh, in front of their houses, and quite honestly, it comes down to a, a policy question. It comes down to a question of of resources, um, and uh, I included memory. It comes down to a question of, of I think resources and equity. Um, whether the town's willing to maintain it for. Um, in, in front of some residents' house and not others, sort of how do we, how does the board sort of balance that? Um, and it's a question of resources. I mean, we have, other than Keith, we have three full-time people who work at the highway department. Um, they, it's really not something that they take on if they have to mow right. the entire, you know, that entire strip. So. That's really just the, the facts of, of the situation. And I don't, I don't know how to, yeah. I don't know what to recommend in terms of okay. answering that. I think it's, it's an option here. And what I, what I see, I, I drove down there today. Keith Mose does what we call here roadside mowing. And he does chestnut plane uh, probably back to the telephone poles on either side. When he comes into the center of town, well, these areas, there's nothing mowed. Maybe that Keith should mow. The ones that don't feel they have to mow their lawn in the center of town, he mows to the telephone line like he does the rest of Chestnut Plain. And that's it. Not, not mowing it as a lawn, mowing it as roadside mowing. There's a difference. Roadside mowing is with, it, it's not a lawnmower riding a lawnmower going along the road. It's with that. Uh, it's like the arm. Um, or an arm, or what, what, whatever the rotary, rotary uh, mower, or whatever, on an arm that he goes, makes one or two passes through everywhere in town. Well, if the people in town don't want to mow, he does the one or two up to the telephone pole like he does everywhere else. But that only happens that once, a, once a year. Once, once or twice, year. whatever he does. Well, that's his that's his, his cycle for the rest of the town. That's what the rest yeah. of the town experiences. So yeah. it shouldn't be any different in the center if they don't want to mow. I mean, you, you can go anywhere else in town and people, people some people mow beyond their property line because they like the view of lawn. Uh, otherwise, it grows weeds or brush until Keith comes once or twice a year to do that. Westbrook Road's getting kind of narrow <laughs> because <Yeah>. the, <laughs> the weeds are, they, and, and, and now we have a car that's new enough that it has sensors and it's warning us oh, yeah. about those, those the weeds. Yeah. Don't the weeds, the weeds on the side, on yeah. Side, yeah. So, so maybe yeah. this should, you know, read as a suggestion that he continue that policy through the center of town of his roadside mowing. It's 
Because oh. yeah. I don't think in other areas in town, well, he's not looking at like, where is the town layout. No. He's keeping the road safe right. by mowing the however many feet. Right. But I think in most other, other side. even most other parts of town, mowing but, two, oh, two yeah. spots, he's within the right over town right away, as, yeah. as far as it goes. Yeah. But where the telephone poles are, we'll mow eight feet on the other side of the telephone poles. And you bring it with every source. Okay, well, like I say, Chestnut Plain, I didn't see that, so. No. Well, mowing or keeping it clear of we have, Because our, in our agreement with every source who, who purchased the, the, the shared mower that we have, Okay. Uh, I think it's eight feet beyond the pole. Eight feet inside the pole, is that where I'm going to keep That's the answer. Because they don't do that on Westbrook Road. Wherever the poles are. Or on Chestnut Plain, it, it's not. Well, you could apply that here in Center Town, eight foot beyond feet. the poles. No feet. They don't go on the other side. I think they go on the other side of the poles. Brian, you can do it here. But I, should, I, I, should ch I should wait and see when they mow it and take a look. Because yeah. I think it basically goes four feet. There. They just get the weeds out so there's no longer, you know, yeah. crop you know, crop into, the, into the road. And then. Well, let's see. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, sounds like uh, we have fun. Go ahead. I, I, I appreciate the resource issue a lot. Uh, and there's a lot of lawn to be mowed, and I get that it would take, and I watch them whip around the library, and it's a lot of work. I've let my the front of my lawn go, and I kind of like it. I'm enjoying the way it looks, and I've heard other people enjoy the way it looks, too. So, but I think there's the other, there's more to it than that. It's those trees, the old trees, that drop big branches. The trees and are next. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that's, so it's the mowing. Then it's also the maintenance of that piece of, you know, that com the town property. And I think that's for me as big or the bigger issue. Big limbs just are should be picked up by the town, not by the by the people. Okay. I mean that's my feeling. All right. Well, you're not, you shall we go on to the next? Well, I, 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 just, I don't. I sort of feel like able to resolve Joyce, the yeah, mowing. Yeah. The one thing that people need to keep in mind about that town common area is that maybe not when the town's appraisers do their business, but I'm pretty confident that if someone were to put their house up for sale and prospective buyers were to wander by and look at a checkerboard of what's kept neat and what's not, or one person, or, or, or nobody having it, and it's just the, 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 the mower twice a summer. That seller's not going to get as much of their asking price as they, as they want to. I guarantee it. I know I, I, know I wouldn't. How much interest? I, I'd be wondering, what's going on here? Because I get the question now. What is going on in the center of town? So I think the people who live in the center of town, as a mini community, if you will, need to really understand that it is impacting potentially sale prices. Just is. Well, if your neighbor didn't mow, would you go and ask him or talk to him about it? Why does it tell me to get involved in your neighbor? I don't know that I would or would not. Not necessarily. He's not arguing that the town should No, I know, but yeah, I I'm know know just, it's just a variable that exists. Yeah. I mean, it may impact people across town's property, but I don't know. Okay. Yes, Steve. I could open my mouth. I don't. I've lived in town all my life, and I've had more people say, "What is happening to the main street in Waverly?" And I'm embarrassed because our main street has always been the epitome of beauty. Those houses and the it's always been well kept, and I can't say that anymore. So I'm, I really am embarrassed when I'm asked by people passing through town what is going on. So I, and I just register my, I'm, un, I'm unhappy about it. But, and, and, and I agree with you, the, it, it is, but you know, the other side of the coin, it is town common. And town commons typically are maintained more than twice a year. That being said, if it's truly ta considered town common, and that's the aura, for, I'm still a bad word, 
it means that the town gets to do whatever it wants to do with that land at some point. And if it decides it wants to have a big festival in the middle, all, all up and down, it, it, it can. If it wants to pave it, it can. And those are the things you, you got to keep in mind. And I'm not saying I want to do any of those things, but it's possible. Well, there are people who say, oh, we don't have parking in town. It's pave it. And we talk all the time about economic development and making our right. center town have more reasons to bring people in and spend their money here. Um, it's just, it, right. And it's, so it's a, it's a resource from that point of view. And I know it historically hasn't been used for anything other than cow grazing that we can uh, hear yet from the historical uh, commission. But so it's more complex than just the same right. we're just going to boom them twice a year. Right. right. Yeah, so I don't think there's a straightforward uh, Solution. Although someone did put up the suggestion that uh, if we could get a an uh, adopt a highway program or uh, adopt like that, adopt, uh, I do like that idea. adopt something which where uh, some local organization takes over the uh, maintenance um, of that, or presumably mowing is what we're really talking about here. That that may be a way to go, but then they get to put up little signs saying center town or on whatever property so that's something that would need to be organized and I this is the first time I really had thought about had that idea you know presented and thought about it um, so I don't know exactly how I feel about it yeah it would take more investigation to see how those programs are done right yeah, well, there's there's island, you know, there's some big islands that you see around Around yeah. some of the towns, and there's a sign maintained by so and so. There's all these flowers and everything, and yeah. so so the concept exists, and um, it's just whether it's I think it's appropriate, and if if that was appropriate, what would the extent of it be, and that kind of stuff. And, but it takes away the it takes away the 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 question of whether the town right. should spend resources. Has Keith done a cost estimate of what it would take to maintain those that area as long? Oh, which area are we talking about? Um, let, let's just for just for argument's sake, let's let's call it from the center school all the way down to the hill ground. Well, I guess either way the answer is no. But I was just wondering, sort of what I wonder, extent are we talking? About? Yeah, I, I I'm going to say again from the center school down to. No. I don't know who the person, last person who yeah. lives on the left hand side. Flint, or, or, Flint's, or, or, Flint's, all the way down to Flint's Flint. before you go down that, the, the hill and, and the water. Yeah, before, yeah. Before, yeah, before obviously the Fudders property. Yeah. I, I wonder what the cost is. Because if you're going to do a, an adopt a highway program and you were to approach, I, who cares? That's their first question. Right. What's it going to cost me? Right. Yeah, but, and, and my understanding is that if you're doing mowing in June, and yeah, like May and June and up until July. I was talk, just talking to Bill Smith the other day. He goes, you know, if we sit down and take a breath, the grass grows and we gotta get up and go mow again. Mm -hmm. So right now, it's a lot of work in maybe among people who don't have as much time to do it at that time. And then come August, he said, talk to me in August if you want me to do anything else at your property because I can't fit it in. The grass is just growing too damn fast. Because it's, it's but so wet. I'm here. Yeah. So, so they, it might not be a simple answer. Uh, it might be that this, the grass cutting has to happen at a time when other things are also keeping it busy. And so, I just put I put that out there. But as far as just cleaning up the roadside, Ryan, what was the organization that was cleaning up Christian Lane here the last week or two? There was people walking up and down. Those with garbage bags, clipping. Collected rubbish that was on the side. Who was that? I don't know. That was yeah. um, um, Montserrat Archibald, and I can look up the other person. It was in the last scoop, front page of the scoop. Monty and uh, somebody. Audubon and, has done that in the past as well. Mary. Um, uh, we did that preservation used to do it. Okay, they do all. And Mary Shanley Clover did it. They, they did like like a weekend or a, a one. As far as I know, it was a one day thing. Yeah, a one know. day, and it was all like <laughs> trash. It yeah. wasn't. I don't think they're going to be long mowers. No, but, but that is happening in town already. But yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, the other one of the other um, items, and Melissa had alluded to it with the, the condition of the trees. Um, 
trees are old in this portion. Uh, the trees are old in this portion of the town, um, and a lot of them are going to are getting towards the end of their life cycle. Really, uh -huh. to be completely honest, and I, I think kids trying to replace them. Um, it, but quite honestly, it comes down to a question of resources. Talking about sort of maintenance of the tree of the standing trees, um, it comes down to a question of resources. With the budget, fifty-five hundred dollars for trees currently. Uh -huh. Um, that's across town um, to, to address issues and uh, I don't know, I guess it would be a question for, for Keith whether we think if he had more resources, more money so to speak, if, if he could get to some of the, the standing dead limbs and those types of things. Um, 5,000 of that, 5,500 is for private tree contractors because the, the town doesn't yeah. have the equipment to right. um, do this kind of work. Um, but I, I didn't really, I didn't really take it as, as, as what Melissa had said. I didn't really include anything here. I think about sort of the, the branch pickups side of it. I was thinking about sort of the dead tree removal and the, the standing limb removal. Um, in theory, though, if you take out the standing dead limbs, you would kind of address the ones that they wouldn't make it to the ground um, in most cases, but not in all cases. Um, but that's sort of how the tree, how the tree, how the town handles trees uh, currently is much of it's done by private tree contractors. And the more money that we put towards it, the probably to a certain extent, the more work that could be done. Yeah. Um, so. Okay. So then it, I mean, it doesn't seem like an obvious, no-brainer thing we can do in the next zero to three months on this one, but it sounds like it folds into the next budgeting cycle. Possibly. If it, if it, yeah, it could be helpful. Yeah. The next item I talked about, the sidewalks here. We don't know if the sidewalks are in <coughs> um, And that, that relates back to the complete streets grant that we have. Um, the, en the, the engineers have been hired, the engineers um, working on the preliminary design. After the preliminary design is prepared, it's going to be at least one public hearing um, on the proposed plan. <coughs> and as we mentioned before, construction of that should happen um, next spring. It would need to happen um, before the end of June. At this point, I haven't seen the preliminary designs. I don't know what the proposed layout is. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know much, but I know that it, it's it's being worked on, and I know that there will be a, a public hearing as to location and those types of things. That will take again. That will that would cover the sidewalk reconstruction from the center school to the town hall, and from the the center cemetery to um, we'll call it the vicinity of the way we end. Um, and it, for the more southern portion, I think we have that as as another. Um, yeah. part of a, a future complete streets grant application yeah. and then th again this is a future conversation I don't think it's I don't think we're going to resolve anything I know we're not going to resolve anything tonight but yeah. what happens in terms of sidewalk winter maintenance um, that's still something that that, that needs to be determined um, I don't know if there's any yeah. discussion to have on that no, I think we'll uh, at some point we have to have the sidewalk winter maintenance discussion. <coughs> probably Keith needs to be on that. Yeah. Um, and then the, I think the last item was was discussion about light pollution at that town hall, um, and we've taken a look at it. And I think what's causing the problem, if if I understand it correctly, is there's a. I know there's a couple there's a couple street lights, but there's and correct me if I'm wrong, Melissa. There's what I think is causing the problem is the utility light that's um, installed on the utility pole that's in the island of the parking lot. That's it's not facing down. It's not facing down. It's facing across. It's shining at the town hall. It's shining at the neighbor's backyard and in house. Um, I had conversations with um, Mark Busse about it when we were there for other electrical items. He was under the impression that. Um, Eversource has some different alternative types of lighting that could be installed there. So my, uh -huh. my understanding is that it's, the light is owned by Eversource, 
account pays for the electricity. Um, and you know, that's something that um, we're going to investigate as to whether we can get a different light there. Uh, right now, it just kind of it, it blows up the whole area, um, or floods the whole area with light. Um, so I'm, I'm hopeful that that's something that, that we could work with ever source to, to change out. Um, Especially if they want all those poles put in. Mm -hmm. Right. You've got a little leverage. Ain't that that problem for a run a day? They were still haven't done anything about it. So at the town good hall. look. <laughs> yeah, and, and I admit I'm I'm not one who understands why the light is really necessary there to begin with. Yeah. I don't. I, yeah. it, it, town hall's not used at night that often. Yeah. I, I don't I don't get it. I'd like to go back for a minute to the, the lawn maintenance. I, I'm just thinking about, you know, I, I mentioned uh, having Keith uh, do roadside mowing in the center of town to back behind the telephone poles eight feet. I think it, it, it's going to affect parking. The way it's sitting now, uh, you've got two major concerts coming up into July and August, I think. People are going to park up and down the road. If you've got brush, whatever, they're not going to park there. So you're, you're, you're obstructing parking. I, I think that needs to be cleared on both sides, or at least that one side of the road, to make to allow people to park. Either at 200 uh, Chestnut Plain or, or further down, maybe too far, but still, you you got a lot of area that you're you're gonna be uh, deterring people from parking there because of the high grass and brush, whatever else is there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. And you guys all might look at me saying, no, not in a million years. Obviously, you guys don't own that land. And the frontage is technically the spot between the sidewalk and the houses. What would happen if the town deeded the land to the property owners along Chestnut Plain Road. And then you obviously would still, you wouldn't have your, your 10 foot frontage on off, off the road. I mean, that's, you know, town can do whatever it wants to do with that, just like it, it can, you know, but what happens if it deeded, because then you could sell it as part of your land. It would add to your property value. Pay more taxes. taxes. Pay more taxes too, taxes. absolutely, but not dramatically. I mean, it's not gonna be, you're not adding a lot of acreage per house. I, I just thrown it out there that I know I'd consider it if I had it, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I was at 15, yeah. uh, 10, 15 dollars a year more in property tax, maybe. It would make a difference to me personally. I can't speak for everybody, but I would say. it would it would matter. Like a, a, I mean, a good difference or bad difference? A good difference. I don't have a service, or I mow it all myself, and I work 50 hours a week. I mean, that's all part of, and there's the assumption that we will do it, and I want to do it. But it's just it reached that point where you expect it to be done. And that's the part that bothers me, the expectation. And I totally appreciate what you say. It's, it's The town is beautiful. My yard beyond the sidewalk is gorgeous. I build gardens. I keep it up all the time. So it's not, it's not about that. It's about, but wait a minute. You know, how about some help? You know, how about something? I, just, I mean, that's what it is. It's not. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Well, it's assuming. Uh, assuming. Yeah, yeah. I don't feel like we've got a good resolution because I sort of think we need our highway superintendents in front of us. It's a longer conversation. It's, like Absolutely. it's a longer conversation, and it, it may be that this is the summer of communication. People, uh, people being disappointed in what town looks like, but it's starts a conversation that maybe goes somewhere and doesn't just get lost well, at the end of the summer. Joyce, if I may, yeah. I would. Of course. And again, I'm going to speak for myself. I think personally, my read, my, my read of the pulse of the town, I think the town would be a lot more amenable to having conversations if some of the landowners weren't growing their land, their, their, their lawn. I, 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 think, I think you kill people with kindness, you get bees with honey, that you know, that kind of thing. And I think that that all we're getting now is people scratching their head to Adelia's point, what's going on in the center of town? Who are these people? And 
it's not, and so if, if all of a sudden the, all the properties were being maintained historically, because I don't believe people take it for granted. I think people just don't know. I know that. I, someone yelled at me the other morning and, and used foul language and said, mow your lawn. Right. And I said, it, I was in my house. I couldn't defend it or whatever. But so, yeah. They think it's they think it's us not mowing our lawn. Right. They but don't the, know it's not our lawn. I totally get it. But in the spirit of trying to enhance communication, I, I think having that area, those those properties maintained, would actually go towards the communication more. And I could be wrong, but that's that's my gut. Well, shouldn't some of that maybe be reflected in, in the scoop news articles to tell people about the center of town and what's uh, the boundaries uh, well, and what's I, expected I, or not expected or who's doing it or going to do it? Or? Well, uh, the scoop does not have a staff of reporters. No, okay, people well, submit, well, people well. submit articles <laughs> and it's people can approach. submit, if it's opinion, it's clearly labeled as opinion and whose opinion it is is there. Yeah. Um, right. If I had a cub reporter, I'd send them out to go uh, look at both sides. Of, uh, of the issue. I'm oh, sorry, um, I'm blog. I can do that. I can do that. Right. Uh, uh, so if, if people are certainly welcome to use the scoop as a, as a method of communication. Next deadline, I'll need a second mm -hmm. to look up, but it's, uh, I believe it's like last week of August or something like that. Um, because uh, and it should come out after Labor Day is when it will come out. So sorry, Dean, we're not going to get in there in time for the chicken supper, the chicken burn. Do we have a comment here from uh, um, Yeah, we have another comment. Hi. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, uh, Debbie Hale. I live in the Smikes house uh, right next door to Town Hall. Yeah. And um, I just was thinking about the sidewalks and the issue of mowing uh, with the new design that is being generated right now. And mm -hmm. Ryan said he wasn't quite sure, you know, yeah, it's, not the, it, it's not ready yet. Yeah. But I'm just Hypo, what is the word? Hypothetically, logically yeah. yeah. speaking, if that sidewalk were, were to move into that town common, which I believe the, the complete streets have proposed that with the maple trees on either side, you know, as opposed to where it is now, I mean, that might impact this discussion of mowing and all of that. But isn't this discussion really also has to do with the highway department and resources available. Oh, that's exactly what she, yes, that's it's exactly the what budget issue. issue. So yeah. will that be on the, in the budget, you know, to discuss that? Well, uh, be, coming I mean, up? that's exactly the information we were, we okay. don't have. What is the budget impact of, of how much is it going to cost? To, to do either what Fred is suggesting or what you know people are suggesting if we really do the whole 160 feet. Um, we don't have the numbers right now. Is um, the streets yeah. looking at that? But, it kind of ties in with the sidewalk design yeah. as well, though, as far as yeah. the concept. Right, so, so you, yeah, we, I mean, independent of it, we don't have the uh, numbers, so we also don't have the numbers with the with Fleet Streets because we also don't. But you're right. So that that yeah. So there are a lot of members we don't know, and uh, that will need some time to to sort out. You're right. Those sidewalks were put in, <coughs> put in under a grant way back when. Yeah. As will the new ones be put in? A <laughs> grant. I mean, one of the. Uh, I'll just be honest. From from what people are telling me about about the the lawn mowing stuff is, and it's it's the argument we hear about a lot of things is. Well, if the town's going to do it for them, why doesn't the town do it for me? Um, and that's what I hear from a lot of people when they when they talk to me about the issue. And I've never been able to come up with a a good answer to that. I just sort of listen and. Um, well, and that's the unknown because there is an it, it's an easy answer. The town owns the land. It's 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 not it, it, it's we, not just town control. The town owns the land. We own the land for. We, we own, own the land, the land for two miles. Fifty-two Westbrook Road, and we own right, the land for two miles here. That's, that's sort of the complicating yeah. factors. 
So I say we go out to bid for the entire town and anybody that wants their town property mowed, they get assessed. You in the business? Everybody has their option. Do you want us to mow it or do you want to mow it? And the whole town gets to have their call. Checkerboards. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> would, it, would, it be, would it be helpful to, to look at other towns that have that same situation? I mean, you can go Anfield, you can go Old Deerfield. There's all that land between the road and the sidewalks. Sidewalks are closer to the house like they are there. Who maintains that? Is it mowed? Yeah. South Deerfield, the same way. I mean, who, who does that? Yeah. Is that something? Yeah. I, you guys, I, I don't know. Find out. I can't figure that out. I've only just now figured out that the scoop deadline is Wednesday, September 4th. Oh. <laughs> uh, so uh, so get, your, uh, get your articles in by then. I guess maybe that the people that want the town to mow it should investigate other towns. How are other towns yeah. doing it? If they find out other towns are doing it for them, well, that's ammunition to tell us that maybe we shouldn't look at it seriously. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I mean. Maybe it's a simple, thank you for maintaining our land for all these years. Maybe it's just that simple. You know, maybe oh. it's, gee, oh. thanks. Like a, a, thanks to know, everybody who's been mowing town property for all these years. I mean, sometimes yeah. thank yous go a long way, and that takes care of it. Oh. But to just continue with that assumption, yeah, you really should know it, big property values, how it looks, all that. I get all that, but uh -huh. just know, thank you, I, I don't know. Well, thank you, Melissa, for all these <laughs> Well, everybody who does it, not just me. Well, everybody. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's just, well, I can personally say thank you. I can't do it on behalf of the board at this time, but, but I, can, I, I have no problem, you know, thanking people for helping keep our town, yeah. have the, the, the character that, we all came here. Well, it's, it's no different than, you know, all that time when, when, when Paul Florio drew all the flowers, along with um, yeah, Jimmy and Jimmy LaSalle and, and Fiona and Tim. I mean, I don't think anyone ever really, not a, there weren't a lot of people who stopped them on the side of the road and said, thank you, you guys, but they worked hard. I did. Yeah. I, mean, I, I do the flowers at the library. Yeah. Just because I do, just because I want to, just because I want those pots to look beautiful. Yeah. It's that. Well, thank you for the flowers in the library. It's just it's that easy. And really Jim is. LaSalle, right. thank you for the flowers. I didn't know who put those in. Yeah. Jim and Paul did. Yeah, Peter. Yeah. Yeah. Lisa's born. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 Lisa yeah. Morris. Yeah. Lisa Morris. Yeah. Lisa, yeah. Lisa, thank you. So, yeah. we should. Yeah, I think we, we probably have to move on. Because it sounds like we've made progress on a lot of the yes, issues you. that you brought up, but we don't obviously yeah. have uh, have everything sorted out. Great. So can I send a copy of this to Thank also? you. I'll yeah, thank you. Right I think that would be that would be great. To, uh, I think it should be a public uh, a public document. Okay. Um, we've got two. Oh, we did that one already. We have one more item before town minister takes. We have to discuss and consider next steps with the potential reuse of the center school. Um, where we left this last time was we um, wanted to form a kind of a working group that um, might do some of the brainstorming and really try and think outside of the box and inside of the box and come up with uh, a set of ideas of what we might pursue for the center school. Um, Without them having to be constrained by things like uh, like cost and that sort of thing, that getting just a lot of broad ideas and exploring would be good, and then we are looking forward to some technical assistance that might help us um, fill in the what is the actual cost of various things. I mean, in advance you can say yes, yeah, certain things are going to be more costly than others, but to get really specific. Um, we'd actually need uh, some technical assistance. But the idea was to form a working group. And we were all supposed to go find uh, names of people that we would think was Or skill sets. sets. Or skill, skill sets. sets. Or skill sets. Yeah. yeah. And so I, 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 I came up with names, homework. actually. But I, <laughs> I didn't do my homework. I, I, I was negligent. Oh, OK. You're fired. Okay. I, came up with, <laughs> I came up with skill sets. Well, first I did names, but then I realized yeah. we were looking at skill sets. So I came up with a bunch of skill sets I think would be useful. Yeah. Without identifying people, I mean, I have 
people, yeah. I guess I could for each one of these if you really want to do that. Well, yeah. we have to sometime or other. Yeah. Should we, should, can, I, can I request a, 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 an extension to my home or something? That's a good professor. I don't know. Jeez. Oh, I, the, I'll take that under advisement. <laughs> uh, I, I was looking at Fred's list, which I got just before the meeting. Um, I have, have someone from a historical commission on there, someone from the building committee on there, a remodeling a contractor and a building contractor. And I don't really know what this, there's a distinction between those two, right. might not be important. A small business person, uh, someone with housing redevelopment experience, um, volunteers interested, select board member, and town admin representative. Amy. Um, and, <laughs> Uh, I, yeah, I, I sort of feel like that's probably a good list to start. I guess I would like to see something wider, like, like people who are like outside of the what can we do with the building committee to think a little more outside of the box. Well, I think it's good that we have like people who have, I mean, clearly historical commission and people who are working on committees are going to be people who've been here for a while. Is that volunteers? The, the read, read then, my next yeah. continue on oh. where I say one, once we, we do the brainstorming, there's other specialists we need to that could get involved. Right, but, but yeah, but my understanding was that this committee was not to burden itself with ideas like, oh, you can never do that with this building because this is the way I've always built buildings, or uh, it, that to really expand what's even being considered. Because I think sometimes if, you know, the old saying to every carpenter, the problem, you know, the solution to the problem is, is a hammer if you're a carpenter. Solution is surgery if you're a surgeon, you know. Or vinyl siding out of fire station. There's vinyl siding out of fire station if you sell vinyl siding. Um, there's just, sometimes, if, so if we, if we have lots of people who like have done what we've done in the past alone. I mean, if, 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 that, if there's too much of that, then I think they'll be a little bit more kind of closed and only consider, you know, things that would have like, oh, we're never gonna be able to afford this or that or the other. And I, and I don't want them to be that constrained. And I really want them to consider everything. You know, and, 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 I, and I sort of, I, so I feel like this needs to be expanded. You don't wait till after these people brainstorm to expand it. But no, for they example, would brainstorm. they would they would listen to brainstorming and then put their two cents worth into it and come up with recommendations. Right, but I want the brainstormers to have a, a wider. Well, that would agree. that would be anybody that shows up at the brainstorming session. Uh, well, I, was, I wasn't limiting it to just yeah. these people doing. But we know people don't show up to brainstorming sessions. Yeah, but, session. yeah. Well, I know. So, yeah. so we, they've got to be kind of invited. So I brought specific developer. names. What's that? I brought specific names oh, for, for people. But it, would, it might be it, it, nice to get that guy from Montague who looks at old buildings and has been refabbing them. You know, because he's going to, you know, he'll know whether he'll have a good idea about whether that is a project that somebody could realistically take on. And then we go do the actual work to figure out uh, if that's uh, if that's going to be viable, but we we have remodeling contractors in town that could tell us. But we the don't have purpose. I, I mean, yeah, I, 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 I don't like to hear from, from a developer. Well, I would like to hear from uh, uh, an. I don't even know. Well, I got that housing developer, redeveloper. I have some of that on there. Uh, a realtor would be good one to A know. realtor. I mean, someone who who's, who who designs. Someone who would experience on shared office space. You know, I, I don't know. Or uh, someone who also needs to know what it's marketable. Yeah. But, but then you're, you're getting into, rather than people in town, consultants, I, I guess, hiring a consultant to do this that has some I think that's the next step. That, that's the, that's the technical assistance on figuring out what ideas are really viable. Right, and I, I think we can do that with, with volunteers from these special specialists. Sometimes it's okay to go outside town. I, I know. Well, I think some of these are going to be outside of town anyway. Yeah. Brian, did we get the grant? They have that. Well, that would be 
big piece of information you have. All right. Well, well the timing is also the last week. Yeah. Anyway, I've I've got a few names. One of them, it might be what you might call a developer's wife, but someone, uh, I, I was, I, of course, I, I'm going to claim I did this homework. I got help from other people who I talked to on the phone. And uh, so uh, one person I bumped into at a, a party, uh, he's a, a biophysicist, lives in town, very sensible guy. Uh, he calls a spade a spade. Uh, his name is Stan Scordillis. And I asked if he'd be willing to serve on a committee that's going to be over, you know, for a few times to brainstorm center school stuff. And I think he's uh, he could be kind of an out of the box thinker sort of guy. Um, he'd also be very representative of uh, I, I don't know if this is going to sound bad, but like Joe homeowner in Waitley who isn't necessarily as plugged into things. You know, kind of what what would kind of general populace think of things. And I think you have a good perspective for that. Um, uh, I was also, uh, someone suggested Ann Robaleski, um, whose husband has made developments in town. So she was here. She was here? She is here. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, know, I know your husband's face, but I don't know your face. Oh, my God. So, uh, so Ann was suggested. Be, I'm so sorry. Um, People should wear name tags. If I don't know their names, they should just wear name tags. So her name was, was brought up, and I think because you've been around for a long time, but you're also, you know what it's like to be, you know, what uh, you're developing housing is like. Uh, or at least you've got someone you can ask. Um, someone mentioned Jane Grimko as well. I uh, know she's not, you know, she's not on the finance committee anymore or anything like that, and she may you know, she may not want to she may not be up for that. I don't know. You just missed her by 20 minutes. Yeah. Jane Krupka was here? Yes. Yeah, she was here. Oh, in here? Yeah. Oh. No. Yes, she was. She was in the back row. Oh, I didn't see her. Damn. Um, Why would you? June, we don't have to do FCC stuff here. Uh, so uh, Judy Markman was brought up, but she's like on every committee, so she probably already has a conflict with whatever they're going to meet. Um, and then uh, maybe bringing in one of the neighbors who would fill one of Fred's categories of small business person um, would be Ann Barker um, from over across the street at the Quang Um Might be someone who she knows about building a, a business in a small town and that might be. Um, so those are five names that I brought in and I know all five of them will probably not work out. The other one who's actually told me that they would do it is uh, is Stan Squirrels said he'd be willing to do that. I would I would like to think through the skill sets again, and I apologize deeply for for not getting that accomplished on my end. Um, but I, I do think that a, a real estate developer, not just a housing developer, but a real estate developer, would make sense. <coughs> I do think that someone who has experience with shared office space to see if it, if that was something that would be viable in a small town like Wheatley. What are the other shared office spaces around here? Maker space. Um, you know, small businesses in town in, in the region that are looking for uh, more space. Uh, um, I, 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 you know, someone from mass development uh, who, who knows the landscape of what people are looking for. Um, I just think that we need to go outside the scope of who lives in town um, to tell us what's possible, and then we marry it with what makes sense within the fabric of this town and what just would be an outlier. I, you know, I, I, I just don't want it to be a bunch of people sitting around saying, oh, that'd be great, and with no, no data, we need data, 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 data. And we don't have any. Well, I, I think it, it should be like a two-step process. First, identify what's, well, do a brainstorm and then pick out the, the best or most feasible options and then get the data to evaluate them. But it's going to cost. Feasible. It's going to cost money. To do it all at once, uh, I, I think we're 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 biting off too much here. We need the mass development grant to either come through or not, so we know, because they will do this for us. That's what they're all about. Yeah, I'll follow. Yeah. Follow. Yeah. I mean, um, how long? How many months ago did we submit that application? That was right yeah. before annual meeting. Right. When it came in, and it was. 
just uh, yeah, yeah, whatever it was. That time, uh, I think. Yeah. Because they will, yeah. they'll fund any of, of the cost of it. So I, I just right. But we, we, I think we have to come up with the ideas yeah. first. Uh, Chris had his hand up. He's got some contracts. Just curious. Is the intent to retain ownership or oh, to sorry. bid out and have somebody develop? All of the above. Okay. All, yeah. All things considered, we could, we could we could tear the whole thing down, make it into a park. We could try to preserve it, make it into something that makes money. We could try to preserve it, make it into housing. Or the you know, we we really want to consider uh, every possibility. We could tear it down and build a new building there. I mean, we don't know. Right. You could yeah. You could tear it down and build something else there. That's there's any any number of things, and I, I don't say any of those because I think any particular one is a great idea. But we got to do something, and the the main impetus right now is we're paying ten thousand dollars a year for it to sit there and not get any better. And I'd rather spend the ten thousand on something else. Well, if it'd be less, and just the just the heating, if we let we eliminate it. Well, no, it would just no, the, the insurance. Let's not know. quibble about what the cost is. I know, but we have to have insurance, and we have to heat it. No, and those no, two no, costs so come they, to ten thousand dollars. And an Irish pub. Yeah. And so, so, so what? Uh, so John has asked for an extension on his homework. Right. So it's like a continuance. So could we bring more ideas to our next meeting and with a goal of settling on getting that brainstorming committee going? Yes. So are, are we looking for skill sets? Or people, both. or both. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm going to have certain skill sets that I think are important, but if we also have names, names associated with those skill be, sets, that would be great. Okay, so and we will try to find the skill sets sounds cost. Yeah. So, yeah, okay, so, so, so we, we you're in charge of finding people who yeah. fit all those skill yes, sets. Yes, I can do yeah. that. And, and so, so our charge is to provide this to Brian before the next meeting. Yeah. Okay. I think that's good. Three-week extension. Okay, yeah, good. Three-week extension on your homework. Okay. And personally speaking, I'd be happy to give you a three-week extension on town administrator updates. I know you would. Okay. That'll take us past some of these important updates. Okay. Well, Very important four updates. Minutes. Four minutes for town administrator updates. Anybody want to hear about a flag ceremony at the state house? I thought so. Okay. Then don't take no further steps. Brian, it's all yours. So, the flag ceremony at the State House has been scheduled for July 17th at 3 p.m. at the Great Hall. Okay. Will there be a bus load? <laughs> we might need, we yeah. might need a bus, I suppose. Maybe. j and transportation. Yeah, I, I actually can't go myself. I can't. Um, uh, but that's, but that's been, okay. That's been confirmed so, by Amy. Yes. Three o'clock, two o'clock. Okay. And three o'clock. Is there any of us who could be there? Going. You're going? Okay. So D get a ride with John. Well she's gonna spend the entire day in Boston and, and much into the night. Oh. I don't go to Boston just for one meeting. No, okay. All right. Okay, great, thank you. Next. Um So we we think about talking about mowing. Mm -hmm. Um the boo school and mowing. We had sort of talked about this a little bit, and Keith was wondering um, what the board had thought of it. Because up to this point, we had been mulling at the blue school because we were using the field. Uh -huh. um, and I think our inclination now is to not mow it now that the field is not being used. Yeah. Um, in part because of the discussions that we just had in terms of mowing property that's not used by the town. Yeah. Um, so. And, um the folks who are going to be building in there are at the, I haven't seen any indication that they're starting no. to work. Um, no. Is that what's if, if, if the grass gets overgrown? What's the downside for us? I, I just think it's the aesthetics. It doesn't look great for the neighbors. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, I do have an update from from Obear, uh, from Bob Obear. Uh -huh. um, he said he's submitting his. Um, HT, so housing tax credit application by the beginning of August, um, and hopes to start the project by the fall. Um, and um, he'd asked me to contact Ed Bronski of uh, uh, Mass Office of Business Development about 
he's interested in, in taking advantage of the abandoned building tax incentive. Um, and he thought that there was some information that needed to be submitted by the town, but that's not the case. So um, we're looking at the, the housing tax credit application by the beginning of August, and then so hopefully to start okay. up by the fall. Okay. So if it so becomes a something that's unsightly to whatever extent, this is that field, it's kind of, it's back behind the parking, it's kind of away from the road. Right. Um, well, it's, not, it's probably not going to get too unsightly. Not for, this not for people on River Road, it's right on River Road. Okay. You got to remember Oh, okay, that's right. Lane. So, yeah. so the Christian Lane side might not look as bad, but the, the River Road, Road side. Um, it's, we're moving, if it's been mowed recently, and we're moving into the hotter, drier, it may not actually grow a a lot more before he gets started working on it. The, the other thing yeah. I, I think Keith was doing is is doing leaf pickup in the fall. And you could verify that with him. I'm pretty sure he was doing that every year. And I guess you should remind O'Bear that he should be looking at that as well. Because maybe he knew that the town was doing it in the past, like mowing. But I mean, we could ask him to. There's yeah, I mean, that, that's... Under any, under any yeah. I, would, I would definitely look, give him a heads up that if we're going to stop mowing, yeah. let him know and say, because um, we're not using the field anymore and so on. Yeah. The, the other side, just I'm just thinking negotiation here, because we do want those fences. If he's willing to cover the cost of relocating those fences, then we mow one more time. Trying to get the project costs down, huh? Reducing town costs. <laughs> that's a pretty. That's a pretty good trade. One mowing of it's pretty small. Well, I don't but know what one mowing costs, and I don't know what relocation of a fence costs, but I'm guessing ballpark they're about the same. No, I'm guessing. Oh, you know, see, I yeah. like I said, I'm completely guessing. Mowing yeah. is a is a You're day or less. I don't know, a day or less. Fences are expensive. So you're okay if he doesn't mow it? I guess I'm willing to take that risk. Okay. I'm willing to. What about you guys? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel badly for the neighbors. Yeah. It will be a very short-term problem. Yeah. Well, then, then we can revisit it if it becomes a long term. Okay. Right. Yeah, let's revisit if it becomes long term. Um, you have an inquiry that was sent to you above. Um, I was wondering if the town was interested in selling the above-mentioned parcel. 68 State Road Parcel 25, otherwise known as the uh, DeMille property. Holy moly. Purpose? Um, I asked that. Um, said that um, obviously this needs to go out to bid and everything, but the purpose would be a small, discreet trolling slash impound lot and 12 car or less used vehicle sales lot. Oh, right across from the Zarmans. We're not going to get much property tax from that kind of a business. And you said what did you say the impound lot? A small, a small discreet trolling slash impound oh, lot. Impound. Indoor 12 car or less used vehicle sales. You get very little tax. Uh, I think there's more benefits to other uses, more town benefits tax wise to other uses than. Uh, I'm not, can, are we allowed to yeah, pick and mean, choose the purpose of a sale? Or I, I'm not sure we're allowed yeah, to do that. I mean, it turned, it, if this were to go out for NARF, yes, you could you could say we are looking for X, Y, and Z to be there. Really? If you don't meet the requirements of the RFP, then the bid's not responsible. I'm extremely biased in all this, so I'm not sure how much I should be involved because uh -huh. I know my answer will be. Because you're right. I know your answer will be. Relatively speaking, I would consider myself in a buttery if the town did not. Yeah. Well, I, the, so, the, there's renewed interest, I guess, in the housing committee. We're looking at that again. A developer that may be helping us develop that. So I should say the town. The, so we the are town studying reuse options. Starting reuse of that. Yeah. Uh, okay. I love the use of land. And even you know the size of a lot of lot, it, it's own commercial, but there's enough frontage there for probably four, maybe five individual lots. If you want to divide them on houses, or you talking about either one. Either one. There's over 500 feet of frontage. They need 150 feet for a building line. So you got you could get possibly four. And it's right after bus building lots. Yeah, on a bus lot. 
and you're assuming that there's demand? Oh, there's demand for housing. There, there's waiting lists. I there's hear waiting lists for low cost housing. Low -cost right. housing. You better be on regular bus lines and whatnot. Well, it's no, on it's, a line. Bus it's line. on a, but Once it's technically day. on a bus line. Once a day. Yep. That's what no. it takes. That's a, that's a super segue to my next okay. suggestion or my next update. Yeah. We also have an email from somebody uh, wondering if Waitley has become a PVTA member community because the cut to service the Waitley Park right last year um, is not that good. Many passengers in the area previously used through transportation daily are no longer able to use the service at all because of the limited schedule. So how do we become a PVTA community? Does it cost us money and how many meetings would somebody have to go to? Good question. Well, we are an FRTA community. Are we? we are. Yeah. I'm not sure if PBTA would reinstate the service to the park and ride back up to Fort Church today for the legal member community, but it might be worth looking into. I can see what it is. We need to look into the merger of the FRTA with the PBTA. But who's in which bus is on the route now? It's just FRTA, is it? I. Not PBTA. I, I don't know what I, that I think they used to come up Amherst um, over to the park and ride. Do they, they go down? Uh, they don't go that far anymore. They just go to Sunderland down. Right. But if we're going from there south, say, to Northampton, it's FRTA. I think that's FRTA. But he's talking that PBTA has stopped that bus. Yeah, I get that. That other one. I so that's that. the one we're talking about. I'll, I'll see. I'll try to Yeah, if we can get, on, get a little more information. Ceremony looks cool. Um, Making these filtration projects still going on. Uh -huh. um, they're getting close to, to finishing up. Okay. Uh, hopefully, in the next month, don't hold me to it, but hopefully, that, okay. that'll be online. Um, we talked about the castaways licensing um, and, the, and the anticipated closing. Uh -huh. um, I've heard that, the, I've heard from Nick that Nick's been told that their plan is tentatively close for about 30 days. Um, there's no promises, but that's, that's right. sort of the plan is that after the closing, they would, they would close and do the renovations and address the concerns of the town in terms of some of right. the modifications that need to be made. Um, in terms of the water merger, I had a meeting with, uh, with Wayne, the water superintendent, and the engineer, and that, that is continued to move forward. Um, the engineer was supposed to take the the plans and start the um, uh, permitting process with Mass DEP um, in terms of the allowing the two systems to connect. So the modifications uh -huh. to the two systems. So that's what about, continuing. What about the hardship? Um, do we still need to? Do we still need to? Do I need to get back involved in that? To move that ball forward? Um, possibly. I think communication is going to be important. It is, um, and it's going to depending on, on, I think, what he hears back from SDP in terms of how quickly they're willing to allow us to move it. Because one of the, there's a couple things that need to happen before we can combine the system. One of them being fishing of manganese, so we're not uh, exposing. We're not, we're not people expanding people our uh, ex exposure to. Um, yeah. That's about it. There's a finance committee meeting tomorrow night if you're interested, but it's going to be really short. It's going to be looking at this special time to warn article and. Uh, just wanted to reserve fund transfers that need to be done. Um, most of them are under five hundred dollars each, but the fiscal year ended pretty well. Oh. Um, we haven't done all of our end of year bills yet, but um, we should be. What time is that meeting at? So five o'clock. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, we're planning it's going to be about five o'clock to about five oh seven. Do you have any, do you anticipate any issues with the? Um, I don't know. Let me think about it. Okay, perhaps I'll make a call. Okay. What are you doing? Yeah. I just get by the, uh, I hear there's a plan for the, uh, if this nap goes through with the, the uh, well, okay, that's going to be later on, marijuana stuff. They want to add more filters to the water department. 
Is that going to need a DUP approval and action? Is that how is that going to fit in with our merger schedule? I've heard that some modifications need to be done to the system. Originally, that's what I heard it more from, but right. more recently, I've been heard hearing that it's that it, that the filtration, the capacity that filters may not be the pinch point. It may actually be it may actually be the well pumps. The capacity of the well pumps you need to supply. Yeah. So in that case, what? Uh, on their what? on their on their peak. On their peak. Are we going to have to expand capacity, or is that going to be up to them to find an alternate source? So I'm not sure if I'm not. I don't know 100 percent what what the pinch point what what the pinch point is. Yeah. Uh, but I think my understanding is that the water department's looking at that. Um, and I don't know if it if it was I don't know if it was a well pumps or it was another a different right. type of pump that could put the water through quicker. Are you saying that their attorney came here and maybe told us something that wasn't a hundred percent true? Is that what you're saying? Well, well, the, camera's, might. the camera's still recording, but <laughs> they have they have they have been very generous in their offer to yeah. upgrade whatever structure is necessary. Right. So I can't imagine that they wouldn't upgrade something else even if it weren't like this. Yes, that's that's the, that's the gist of. Yeah. But would, their that would need a DEP approval to do anything like that. Um, I mean, if we had more more filters, it, I don't think it would take too long. Um, I, I don't think it would be that lengthy of an approval. Yeah, we could have more than one project going on at the same time. Can we? No, you said yes. I, I I would think so. Yeah. The filters in the merger say okay. Yeah. Okay. Although they're not going to let us merge until the manganese problem is resolved. No, but, but after that, if you need more filters then for the marijuana, would they let you yep. do the merger at the same time? Okay. Yeah, I would think so. Okay. All right. I think yeah. that's, I yeah. think I've torched your dinner challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Motion. Uh, I like to move that we adjourn. John. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for your